what is going on guys we are here back again at it with mk11 i'm miss me seeks here with the lovely saki sakura and we have the mk top 24 going through to the top eight right now we have the 24 best players here at combo breaker fighting for that coveted top eight spot and we have some insane matches coming for you. Indeed, indeed. We have some legendary names, of course. The Chilean Sins have proceeded. They are both on the winner's side of top 24. You have OD Full Auto, our Florida boys as well. You also have a Gurr, who's actually made a return as yes. well, taking a bit of a break due to some hand injuries, but able to recover and really show out, um, as well as Parsa. Mm -hmm. The legendary noob name is trying to very much to make this comeback happen. Uh, last year got ninth and making sure to see uh, we can get that top eight this year. Yeah, of course. On the winner's side, we're also looking at too easy, which is if you're confused looking at this bracket and you're like, how did Gurr get on loser's side? Too easy was the one yep. to send him there. I mean, we have people like King Gambler, like Euphoring that we saw playing yesterday on stream. And we have a lot of cabals coming. I'm not sure if you saw that, but we have... Diddle, who's one of the top cabals. We have Luddy, who's another top player of a cabal. We have Res Credits, who's another cabal. So we're going to see a lot of cabal today. Technically, Scorpion Prox, also another cabal. Oh, the twins true. as well. True, but the twins do play him. Speaking of cabal, up on the screen now, this is going to be a hype match. I think this is probably one of the most rivalry matches that I've seen in Mortal Kombat 11 history right here. This is going to be full OD Full Auto. Right. Sindel king okay yes. versus ludi one of the best known cabals out here and this is probably ludi's toughest match now just to keep in mind especially if you're checking out the bracket now many of our winners at top 24 they only need that one match mm -hmm. to secure their top eight spot whereas the losers well, they're gonna have to go through a couple of more matches down on the loser side yeah that's for sure i know that a lot of these players on the winner side just want to be one and done lock in that position in top eight and not have to worry about making that losers run where every single game it is on the line whether you stay in or whether you don't full auto a very well-known sindel main one ceo last year just a crazy player luddy as well lots of offline placements and i mean both on winner side both fighting it out here old Full auto is one of those players that takes risks but the most calculated of oh, yeah. risks mind you sindel if we talk about matchups and characters right sindel is necessarily one of the strongest online but the weakest offline this is because even though she does have her 50 50s especially with between uh, her back, uh, I believe, two, as well as uh, also hair flip. Um, offline, though, is a lot easier to react to many of Sindel's uh, pressure. So as you're doing this button check, one thing that you're definitely going to check out here for Old Default Auto is you're going to see how calculated he is when it comes to conditioning Ludi, whereas Ludi is more of that air-to-air -air movement, of course, with Slight Gas Cabal. Yeah, of course. I feel like we're definitely going to see very aggressive play coming out of Ludi. Whereas, like you said, calculated, calm, trying to control the pace of the game is probably what we're going to see from full auto here. But we've gotten a button check real quick. They are both on their mains right now. And that's probably the matchup we're going to see, seeing those cancels. The low star screamer is also going to help with that mix with Sindel as well with conditioning. And both these players ready to go. Now, Full Auto does play a Sindel variation that isn't necessarily focused on damage nor screen cancel. Uh, I know he's able to actually do the screen cancel variation, but he prefers to opt more for that competitive one, which is uh, going for customs, which is the low, mm -hmm. and I believe the air, and he also has hair flip. So he utilizes more of this projectile like Sindel and then allows the hair flip to be able to capitalize, for example, if he gets a jump kick in, or if he's really conditioning you to try to block low, going for that uh, hair flip. So we do see, oh, we're the actually gonna get, she did. yes, oh, this is I perfect. I love this move. This is one of the least like used moves that I really see Sindel using a lot, but gives her so much air mobility that people don't even seem to notice, because she can do, like, she is able to jump and get those air to airs. Mm -hmm. in ways that Cabal's going to have to deal with. 
Absolutely, and here we go. We're gonna start it off. Typical Sindel, you wanna start off with that low projectiles, get your com opponents comfortable. Tries to go for the down four anti-air, but this is a safe string, gonna have to hold that four four up two. Yeah, and jumping in right here, Ludi forcing that breakaway, but Ooh. great anti-air as well from full auto. Got Ludi in the corner here. This Sindel pressure and the conversion, so much damage going right there. I like the attempt on the jump too. However, it does leave Ludi blocking. So Full Auto is going to go for that grab. And this is going to go for that plus frames. You did not duck the booty. Yep. Plus frames every time. And great anti-air again. Ludi not calling out that cancel. If he sees the cancel coming, he's able to jab out of it. But it's really risky to do that. Yep. Don't and there goes that 4-4. Four, four. And once again, the way 404 up to works is that she is able to cartwheel back. So it's pretty much the most safest string that she can do. And then going into the projectile, allowing this way to keep full screen control. But here, Ludi's going to keep OD full auto in the corner. Got to be careful with that interactable. As we all know, full auto is the one with the interactable uh, abilities here. Yeah, and time is about to be a problem here. As we're getting closer to the last 10 seconds of the round, Ludi jumping in and getting the uh, throw again. Six seconds left. They're close to even on life. But Ludi Ooh. needs to get in. He needs to do something. And he tries to go for the raw fatal blow. That was his only option. If he had hit that, time would have stopped and he would have won the uh, that match or that round. Great patience from Full Auto right there. Yeah. Able to just call out what Ludi was trying to do. I did expect like a Nomad Dash, but the Fatal Blow was also a good option. Trying to use a projectile to be able to avoid it. And there goes the Banshee Ghost as well. Trying to get a hit in, because if you amp it, you'll be able to actually come up close. Yeah, come up close. Oh, great wake up there too. Not able to get the conversion. Ludi using that amplified buzzsaw, but it's not going to work. Sindel's getting that back throw and pushing Ludi towards the corner. There's the cancel with more pressure and the D2 to keep him in the corner. Oh my goodness, this pressure from full auto right now. Yeah, it definitely has Ludi very much scared to press. Also notice full auto has not used Scream Crushing Bow. So that is literally still in full auto's weapon case right now. Oh, oh my god, what? The car will stop the active frames before he could get the <gasps> fatal blowout. Oh my goodness. What a first match here. You know, I feel like Ludi had the right idea, but I, I it's just like there's a moment as players, there's like a slowdown in your head. And I could just see Fuala just like, let me do four for it. It's gonna chip out, it's gonna do whatever he's trying to do. And then Ludi just even with the armor, wasn't able to hold on to the damage. Yeah, sadly, but here we go. Heading into our second match. This is a tight one. This is a great first match to have on screen. All right, forward four again, just to start it off. Also gives a lot of spacing to full auto every single time he's able to do that. Oh, Ooh, great jump kick there from Ludi, able to get the Nomad dash. And we have the jump to actually going to let the combo drop just to uh, force a breakaway here from Full Auto, but Full Auto does not bite. Yes, both sitting full screen here, trying to steal out each other's zoning right now. Oh, uses the interactable into the slight gas to get that air buzzsaw. Really good way to avoid some of the buzzsaws that uh, Ludi is trying to throw out here. Full Auto also pretty much actually winning uh, on this health lead now able to actually get some hits in with that forward four tries to get in with the banshee and is going to try to wait patiently fall his blocks the projectile as well yeah and we saw a whole lot of there loading that scream you don't want to get caught by that screen kb that's the end of the mat or end of the round at that point especially with this little of life left on the board Ooh, great cancel to try to go into the forward two. Oh, and oh! there it is all he needs is the confirm into the full combo and this first round is going to full auto over Ludi. As Sindel players, you really want to use that screen crushing blow to secure your round. Um, of course, ideally, you definitely want to keep it until the very end, especially if it can give you the whole game. But if it's going to get you the round, that's important to think about too. Yeah, and Ludi changing his gameplay right now is going in super aggressively on full auto and has a huge life lead right now. So much pressure that he has to hold and Ooh. big punish on the whip and flip as well. And the second round goes to Ludi. He speed ran that. 
Yeah, because <laughs> Kabo <Kabo's Kabo's> speaks. <laughs> <laughs> I like I like that. That was actually really smart fun <laughs> right there. But full auto gonna be able to use the am screen to catch Ludi off guard. However, the trade is in favor of Ludi mm -hmm. as Cabal's buzzsaw allows the opponent to be knocked down fully. Yes, for sure. Oh, and the back on that oh. the down two. <gasps> the wake up up two getting stubbed by Ludi. Yeah, Ludi's conversions have been really on point so far this match. And both of them just boxing back and forth. All right, playing neutral. Yeah, Ludi's the one that has the health lead here, can really stay behind, can take a couple of those low projectiles, but ideally you don't want to. Oh, and oh, there goes the breakaway. the breakaway. Both of them have Fatal Blow on lock. One touch hit confirm into Fatal Blow for either of these characters, and it takes the match. All it takes is that one slight misstep that... Oh, there it is! <laughs> he just full sends it as soon as he sees Cabal jump, and full auto is taking that second match. You use the anti... Uh, you use the Fatal Blow as an anti-air. Oh, that was no. brilliant there from Sindel. Smart because it has a really good hitbox. Yeah, it does. It's, it's a giant hitbox, which most people would complain about. But... It is a great choice right there. He knew the perfect spacing, knew that Cabal was going to have to come down, and his toes were going to get touched, and somehow his face was going to get smashed by a screen from that. Absolutely. And honestly, what a great way of showing off how to play Sindel by Odi Full Auto. I really love seeing Full Auto's uh, Sindel just because he, he really takes a look at how this character works mm -hmm. and and she's very simple but she's also very scary at the same time yeah that's true he breaks it down to perfect gameplay and also just want to mention here we are in shinnok's bone temple both of these characters have tick throws into those interactables that they could use at any moment throughout and so you'll see both of these players probably playing around the interactable trying to bait it out a couple times I do like that uh, Odifo Auto was able to get the Banshee, use the amp on it, and then hit confirm with the hair flip. Mm -hmm. But great tech. And you're absolutely right. This stage is actually probably one of the competitively best stage to use because of those interactables. They do so much damage. And wow, Ludi woke up, or rather stood up too early and was unable to avoid the Banshee ghost. Yeah, full auto here is on set point, looking to close it out and secure that top eight spot. Bloody with the jump in though, into the conversion, gonna get a full hook grab, knockdown, 31%, just like that. Good forward four, up three from Odifo Auto, trying to get the air uh, Banshee once again. Oh, the Whoa. armor break! And there goes all that damage, 37%. Now won't be able to actually launch with it, but that is huge for Ludi, as it now has the full health lead and can take a couple of hits here. Yeah, Ludi can, stand to just sit full screen at this point uh a mistake away right there losing his defensive bar but still happy to just sit full screen he can just try to flawless block those or take a few of the chips oh and here he comes in with the back grab escape fail also loaded so that is perfect for cabal and just if you get grabbed yeah just chip damage here needed from luddy to close out this round Full auto still being patient, looking for his opening, looking to see how he can get in. Ooh. I like the attempt. Probably was trying to get Scream Crushing Blow, mm -hmm. but unfortunately there's not enough uh, health to actually hold on to that uh, saw. Good tech there from Full Auto. Oh, and the trade as well. Full Auto getting back to back screen, or a low star screamer. And gets the Air Banshee Dash, gets in for a full combo. And with the scream, you're able to actually restand. Mm -hmm. So that allows you to kind of tell your opponent, okay, am I going to go for back two or am I going to go for four four? There's the scream crushing blow. And we're going to actually see the jump two and the full launch. And Ludi not breaking away, actually, having to hold it, probably wanting that fatal blow, especially because this is where Cabal can really make that comeback with the damage. Yeah, and Ludi already had that escape field loaded, but he just got another escape field as well. Definitely going to want to use it this round, final round, final time to use it. Oh, oh, and just the whip and flip from mid-screen. Tries to go for the sweep, Ludi but... Has a no! Oh! With 9.46 points of health, Ludi uses Fatal Blow 
and this does put OD full auto on Fatable, but realistically, this is a forward four and then up two. Yeah, this is just, this is out. Oh, the jump, dude, oh! that's the breakaway, and Bloody is taking us to the next match. He's on the board. What a read by him right that was there. So good. That was a Looty move right there. That, that was Looty confidence. That really was, and they're heading straight back into it. Ludi is on the board, and we've got ourselves a match, ladies and gentlemen. The confidence is there from Ludi. I'm loving it for sure. Let's see if Full Auto can let this match kind of go and, and not be able to uh, get scrambled from that last part. Yeah, for sure. Have to be able to take it on the chin as these players play. It's a first to three. There's going to be mistakes made. There's going to be times you have missed input. And it's all about the adjustment. Ooh. Oh my goodness, the hitbox on that scream. Going to get the jump in into the air banshee as well into a restand after 38% damage. That was insane, but perfect. And that's one of the reasons why Full Auto has gone with this variation. You're able to continue and optimize some of the damage that Sindel has. And also, notice again, getting a restand that was very much valuable with that 4 4 up 2. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was. Allowed him to. Close out that round. Okay. Another 4 4 up two. Gets grabbed, but here goes the escape fail. Finally loaded up, and we're going to use it. Cash it all out, Ludi. Wake, spoken up, up three from OD Full Auto. Yeah, and you can see Ludi kind of hovering around this interactable. I'm wondering if he's trying to bait it out. But yeah, it keeps kind of moving in on Sindel. Both of them sitting full screen, looking for those trades. There goes that low. Tries to go for the down two. Probably trying to call out Ludi jumping in with slight gas. Right, yes. And Sindel's D2 does a great job of reaching far across the screen. So it's great for even slight gas to ball. Great flawless block from OD Full Auto. Going to reset the neutral. There goes the air banshee getting the jump kick. Oh, oh no, jump no punish off of the empty grab. And the deep jump in, avoiding the down four anti-air. Once again, Ludi has actually adapted to that. That is crazy, using the jump kick, and there it goes a third time's the charm. Yeah, Ludi is making these crazy adaptations, picking up on Full Auto's gameplay, and we have to see how Full Auto changes to adapt to Ludi's more aggressive style. And just like that, the jump kick into the hook grab, gonna get so much damage here. A guaranteed hard knockdown with 31% with the ball. A pretty expensive round for OD Full Auto. Already just using, got back the attack, bar meter and now just using it up now defensive bar meter up there goes the hair flip and a oh. stub on the forward four up two yep and we've got just a throw here from Ludi. he has the life lead right now no need to go in too aggressively and gets caught by the air banshee dash which gets converted into that whip and flip even on life close to Good projectile usage from Ludi here. Going to use the projectile. And there goes the Air Banshee. Good patience on full auto. Didn't have the meter to even burn it, but was patiently waiting for the breakaway to have to close in a bit. Full auto does have that Fatal Blow unlock. Again, one confirm into Fatal oh. Blow. Can do it here. Both of them have Fatal oh. using breakaway. No oh my god, the grab from full auto taking this first set here in top 24, securing that spot. The late breakaway from Full Auto, or rather, uh, I think it's actually early breakaway, yeah. was able to save him from getting armor broken there. Or rather, uh, breakaway, armor break. Yeah, no, it's armor break. Yeah. Uh, that was crazy. Very good job there from Full Auto. So that is your first player heading to the top eight for Mortal Kombat 11. Now, Ludid still is in the loser side of things and we'll be trying to grind it out uh however our next match now this one's a special one yeah this one is a special one and you guys are in for a treat right now you thought that oh okay that was getting your blood pumping that was getting you excited next up we have one of the chilean twins scorpion prox one of the winners from last year's combo breaker or the winner from last year's combo breaker going up against sunio known for his RoboCop, a top tier player for sure. I've seen him play at a couple offlines and I just, 
this is going to be quite the match. Yes, yeah, so Scorpion Prox, uh, actually, it was the both Chilean twins was in the grand finals yeah. of last year, and uh, it was actually, I believe, Nicholas that won. Oh, and I then thought... Scorpion Prox was second in combo breaker. Okay, okay, I must have confused them because I thought... And they're twins, of course you're yes, going to confuse I them. <laughs> oh, I could have sworn I had it straight, but yes, I remember them playing the Night Wolf Mirror in that uh, grand finals, etc. But either way, we know what Scorpion Prox can do. People were blown away. He came out of nowhere last year, yep. doing very well at Evo, doing very well at Combo Breaker, and just really putting his name on the board. And also has just a slew of characters that he's able to play. He's able to pull out almost the entire roster. Yep. Gonna stick more with Fujin, Cabal, Kotal, yep. if possible, but definitely is just willing to kind of go out of his comfort zone as well and adjust on what the gameplay is. Sunio, I know him mainly as a Robocop player. I don't know him for many other characters. Uh, yeah, so Sunio uh, does have a Shang. Mm -hmm. um, however, hasn't used the Shang, has actually prompted to use uh, more of Robocop more yep. than anything. Um, I believe also has a Jackie at some point, was uh, using, um, back when this was, of course, only competitive variations, was using uh, next-gen Jackie. Uh, for the projectiles. Uh, one thing to kind of keep note here, though, is the last time Scorpion Prox went up against a Sony player, was, which was Zintai, mm -hmm. uh, Scorpion Prox went as Liu Kang and then shifted to Kotal. Okay. So that's something to kind of keep in mind here. However, I also know that Fujin does extremely well against Robocop, and I feel like this is probably one of the toughest obstacle courses because Sunio just does so many crazy things with yes. obstacle course like yesterday we were seeing especially against uh mustard when they were playing against each other um how smart he was using the traps that robocop has while also creating like a literal no fly zone against uh mustard yeah that's actually really impressive see the thing about fujin that must be so hard as a robocop player is you can't rely on low auto nine so we see in the button check here up gun we see him being able to use the parry in the air with that shield because Fujin is going to be able to fly over a lot of the projectiles coming out of Sunio's pocket. I feel for uh, many players here in this top 24, Scorpion, Prox, and Nicholas are probably one of the two players that many people have been trying to prepare for. They they know. Yeah. They know that they know. that it is time. It's like go time. So every single person that has made it to uh, just through this top 24, uh, they're in for a treat because again, playing such strong players like Scorpion, Prox, and Nicholas is like amazing. Um, however, it's also that's your gateway before trying to get into uh, the top eight and a medal and potentially a win as well. Yeah. That's that Chipotle free burrito. Free burritos on the line again today, ladies and gents. <laughs> and that's what this is all about. Letting the intros rock. I love to see it. Love it. Heading right into this. Scorpion Prox again on the Fujin. Sunio on the Robocop. No. The back one catching the neutral jump here from Sunio. And one thing to keep in note here is that Scorpion Prox has a great movement, especially considering that Fujin is one of those characters that has an amazing wave dash. But Sunio already bringing the rockets to the fun and actually trying to go for the interactable. No punish, though, as it's the pushback that prevents it. Yeah, I didn't see any way Fujin could have done that. But the slide here and Scorpion Prox is going to be able to open him up. Great back Ooh. one, two on the whiff D2, and lots of damage here with the wind kicks into the corner carry from Scorpion Prox, just like that. Yeah, and just like that also, whoa, there was a great fall oh into the God. armor break as well. And there goes that back one to go for the meaty situation. No punish. Oh, but we do get a punish off of the down three attempt especially after, as that string continued on. Yeah, both of them with Fatal Blow available as well. But we're gonna go with the forward throw here, just dash up forward throw. And Ooh. he had the escape field loaded and chooses to use it round one. Smart thinking on Sunio. Go ahead and secure that round. You don't wanna lose it to a random Fatal Blow or randomly getting opened up. Gets the overhead, but doesn't use the KB. And the D2 on wake up into wind kicks here from Scorpion Prox. Uses wind push for the hard knockdown again, too. Indeed. 
Go there goes the counter hit. Now, of course, with uh, Robocop, uh, there is no longer that crushing blow as he already cashed out. And Sunio, playing some good defense right now, does get thrown. And Scorpion Prox is going to go for the forward throw. Yep. Food in here, just going to keep it safe with the wind push. And is able to catch Robocop in the air. Hard knockdown in the corner. Look at this movement out of Scorpion Prox as well. Do you see these wave dashes? Ooh. The neutral duck under the grab. Not going to be enough to kill, but it's close. Yeah, that's the scary though, part about Sunio is that he can easily make this comeback. Uh, however, now with 1.10 health and literally just a meter that Scorpion really needs, and there you have it. Yeah, there you go. He could have gone with the back one string, which is one of the great chip out strings. Could have gone with amplified wind push if he wanted to use that bar. Scorpion Fox had a lot of options there. I feel like it was more to just get the full screen advantage. I, it, Fujin does take advantage of being at full screen once again. And this is kind of part of the reason why, right? Being able to actually pull in, catch you off guard, start the staggers. Yeah, and I just saw Scorpion Fox made that adjustment to the arm rocket just like that. It is a high, and he is neutral ducking it, looking to get a punish. But just goes with the back throw for now, switching sides, going back in with that back one. Good box. Great stagger here from Sunio, and now it's Scorpion Prox that's going to try to stagger. Goes for the slide, but unfortunately, it's still going to get punished as it does recover pretty high if you don't uh, continue on to the second hit. Yes, and look at these wave dashes from Scorpion Prox. Look how quickly he's able to close out this spacing that Sunio is trying to create. Good defense here from Scorpion Prox. Does not have to overextend whatsoever. It's really more Sunio that has to come in close, but the stare down, the slight little stare, as if to say, what is your next move? Yeah, both of them sitting full screen here. Scorpion Prox has a big life lead and has no reason to go in on Sunio right now. 15 seconds left <gasps> in the match. So good to use that. You don't it really is. see Fujins use that extended part of the string, but they did it because Sunio was so close, and now... Four seconds, three. He has no options right now. <laughs> and just tried to go for the D2. Scorpion Proc is going to be taking that match. Sunio playing really well, though. Definitely giving Scorpion Proc some problems. I do want to say, usually it's Sunio that times people out, but this time it was Scorpion Prox who was timing people out. It's the battle of the zoners right now. Who knew that Fujin was his owner? <laughs> More like, I would say, just the patience from yeah. Scorpion Prox has been like on point uh, continuously. Great win pull and actually able to get the breakaway for oh Sunio to do God. that. And Sunio has to hold all of this damage. Like, look at this. Perfect. 31%. Unfortunately, that did leave Scorpion Prox in that corner, but the Skywalker is going to help him get out. Yes, of course. And I mean, like, you see these shimmies from Scorpion Prox. He's dashing forward. He's dashing back. And he's just, like, wave dashing. Oh, great duck by Sunio with the punish as well. Scorpion Prox trying to open up right now. The quick poke back one. This should be enough damage to close yep. out that round for Scorpion Prox. Yeah, Sunio did not get that last defensive bar meter in time to be able to even break away. And honestly, if he had done break away, I wouldn't have agreed with it. It is just too much. That was a checking situation. Yeah, I agree. Great reversal throw there from Sunio, sticking Scorpion Prox in the corner. But again, if he can get Skywalker off, he's out of there just like that. And here we go, a side switch. The D2 conversion into the wind kicks. A quick 28% from Scorpion Prox. Use, oh, I tried to use an interactable. And it does not connect, unfortunately, but we are going to see Zunio go back onto this full screen range. However, gets wind pushed away. Yeah, good. Good jump in. Tries to confirm it. The back one. Oh, great cancel. It was such a weird, awkward timing of a cancel that he was able to make something of it. Once again, that wind push coming in very much plus here. And the armor break to actually catch Sunio breaking oh away very goodness. nicely. I cannot believe that that armor break was able to catch it. He did the fastest breakaway possible. It looked like he was about to hit the ground mm -hmm. and those wind kicks just caught Scorpion Prox looking to secure that top eight spot.
And we've got Sunio here going to the fighter select screen. I'm wondering if he's just taking a second to think about it, what adjustments he needs to make. A lot of times these players will use the character select screen as a way to just kind of calm down, think about the match. What adjustments do I need to make? What can I do differently? How can I bring this back? So it looks like Sunio didn't really change variations. It might be it might be the trap that he changed, which would make sense, but um, very much interesting to see how Sunio is gonna take this. It's like you mentioned, players are recommended to actually go back to the character select screen uh, to be able to kind of regroup, refocus themselves. And honestly, I'm always for that. You don't wanna give yourself uh, a hard time either. Uh, take a minute to just breathe and, and see what's going on. And now that spike trap. <gasps> oh, gets the KB right there and is gonna be, oh, he's also running that uh, gas. And if he jails correctly, it is immediately into a grab. He can jail into a grab on Scorpion Prox, which I'm sure Scorpion Prox knows to look out for. Once again, the OCP charge coming in clutch, catching Scorpion Prox every time he goes for the slide there. Now that trap is spiked, so that is putting damage on Scorpion every time he is on it. Yeah, it also slows his movement, doesn't it? Uh, I think so. Yeah, it, 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 might, sure it, it might be. All right, Scorpion Prox looking for that conversion, but great roll from Sunio. Gonna get the chop KB and just low auto nine to close out that round. Like a, oh, great adjustments. I'm liking this new variation that Sunio has decided to go with. Goes for the back one to try to stagger and go in and out. That's the one thing about Fujin, likes to shimmy people, mm -hmm. right? That's does a great job in trying to bait out a button and then whiff punish completely. Yeah, I mean his movement, especially when you have such a high level player on Fujin, his movement is ridiculous. The wave dashing in and his back dash is good too. There's so many options. And the back one is going to punish right there. Scorp Prox is going to use D2 and keep Sunio in the corner, but the side switch. Scorp Prox is now in the corner. There goes the tornado, forcing Sunio to break away. Gets grabbed, and there is an escape fail that is loaded right now. That is loaded, and we will definitely see Sunio if he gets the chance closing out the round with that escape fail. That spike trap is definitely causing some trouble. And Sunio taking the, a first game right now against Scorpion Prox, who's been up 2-0 for this time until now. Yeah, Scorpion Prox actually seem to be a little thrown off by the change in variation, but they're heading right back into it. I'm sure he's ready to make those adjustments and gets the reversal punish with the wind kicks, trying to move in and out and shimmy Sunio here. Full screen, but the wind pull catching Sunio's low auto nine does whiff on that down uh, three, I believe. But still, Scorpion Prox takes the corner. Yeah, hard knockdown for Scorpion Prox and flawless blocks there to avoid the chip, but still going to be hit full screen every single time. Here goes the wind pull, actually avoids the trap, doesn't give it enough time to actually get hit by it. Has to let the combo drop, unfortunately, doesn't have enough meter to keep anything going from there. Yep. Oh, and tries to get the parry, Sunio does, but Scorp Prox does not fall for it. Gets the back throw, and there he is wave dashing in again, closing the space every single time. Ooh, look at that movement, NPC. Yeah, the sh movement, the mix, all oh, that great rollout again from Sunio, able to get a punish on the meaty that Scorp Prox is trying to enforce. Scorp okay. Prox only 47 health away here from closing it out. And right now, Scorpion Prox with no meter, but only needs that one to be able to get the wind push. Nine seconds left. Time is ticking down. Sunio needs to make something happen. A forward throw is not going to be enough damage here. He needs to get a fatal blow or something off, and he doesn't. Fujin is taking that first round, timing out Sunio. It's a very slow animation on that forward throw. So as that forward throw was happening, uh, the timer was just ticking down and down. So yeah. Honestly, Scorpion Prox props to that because that players tend to forget about the timer and they kind of get scared about the grab. Yeah, both of these players are doing a really good job at managing their meter, managing the time, and making sure that they're paying attention to the other player's meter so that they know when they need to break away and when there's not going to be enough damage to make it worth breaking away. He stops the jump with the back one. 
closing in the distance here from Scorpion Prox. There goes the slide, finally actually able to hit. And we got the full opties from the air combo oh. to the grounded. We only do optimals here, MK11 at Combo Breaker. All right, back one, so much chip damage. Doesn't jail into the throw. Oh, and gets the KB again. Fatal blow on lock for both of these players. Scorpion Prox goes for the back throw and tries to get Ooh, this. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, this is so close. Sunio is on his last life here, trying to make it through to a round five. Oh no, the Wimpool actually gonna be forced to punish. The Skywalker. Oh, he breaks Whoa, away. Oh my god, the no way. The jump in from Scorpion Prox during that scramble is going to allow him to go through to the top eight. Oh my goodness, what a scramble at the end there. That was such a scramble. Like, I like jumped out of my seat because I saw two opportunities for Studio yeah. to actually like release the full Fatal Blow or to actually get the kill, but just didn't have the meter to continue the combo. So very nice job. Now the second player to head to your top eight is going to be Scorpion Prox, as soon you will have to duke it out down on the loser side of things. And we have more matches here for our Mortal Kombat 11 top 24 that you don't want to miss. There's plenty of games to watch, plenty of players to cheer on for. But first, let's take a quick break, and we'll be back with some more Mortal Kombat 11 here at Combo Breaker. See you guys. Whoa, 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 whoa. You still here, man? You don't have to do this by yourself anymore. Yeah, we've been looking for you everywhere. They'll handle that. Let's go see the rest of Chicago. Y'all make sure to head over to the Combo Breaker shop right now and check out all the amazing merch from shirts to hats and more in store. Get it today. And welcome back, everyone, to some more Mortal Kombat 11 action hype. Listen, if you haven't gotten your chance to sign up for Mortal Kombat 1 stress test, you better do so. Again, it is extremely important. But you know what else is stressful? These next couple of matches that we're about to see. We were just talking about this earlier, Miss Me Seeks, how we were waiting to watch King Gambler versus Euphoring. Yes. Uh, one thing I do want to say, this is probably the two players that have the most wholesome families ever. They really do. <laughs> Euphoring with his dad mm -hmm. and King Gambler with his mom too. Yeah. I know his dad's also supportive, but we see more of his mom in like the community. And it's just so adorable. I love to see that uh, family supports these players. I agree completely. And we, we saw Euphoring's dad here yesterday. I'm assuming Mama Gambler is here. If not, she's definitely in the chat watching right now. And both of these players just, I mean, top level players. Euphoring has been doing this since he was like 12 years old. Joey Gambler is definitely a top tier player. And we are going to have a crazy match coming up for you guys. Indeed, indeed. Now this is of course, King Gambler wants this. Because yeah. King Gambler makes it to top eight, he has to fight one of the twins, Yes. right? And King Gambler really wants to. He's been studying it quite often. He's been prepping, doing all the homework, mm -hmm. okay? And I think he can definitely take it. He could definitely become a problem for the Twins. Now with Euphoring, uh, this could be a tech technically a Terminator, and we're just gonna have a battle of the 50-50s. Are you guessing, Miss Me Seeks? I mean, I'm ready to guess, all right? Are we thinking it's an overhead? Are we thinking it's a low? Who knows <laughs> at this point, right? But we're going into the battle of the Mix. Terminator, Mix is the name of his game. Sub-Zero, same thing. Um, and, you know, we can look. The best thing that Terminator also has coming into this, he has the best, if not one of the best, anti-airs in the game with his down three. And I'm sure we're going to see Euphoring try to utilize that as well. Indeed. Now, something to keep in mind about Terminator is he does have the teleport. There goes the running man as well. A great punish. Oh, Good but jump. Yeah, that jump, it is susceptible. And once you miss the running man, you are going to get um, hit by it. Yeah, and Gambler's going to force the breakaway there, leaving you foreign with no defensive bar. But he's going to get the launcher, forcing breakaway again, too, and just goes into the bear hug on the ground. Gambler going to have to work his way out of this corner right now. Breakdown one checks here from Gambler. 
And the da dash back and then go for the dash in. Gets the overhead into the creeping ice. And actually going to use the full string to push Euphorian go away. But Euphorian teleporting and actually grabbing uh, the shotgun blast to be able to get in. But now it's just a battle of these pokes. Yeah, Terminator, oh, escape failed, loaded there for King Gambler, and he gets Ooh. caught by the teleport. Oh my god, what a read by Euphoria on the ice ball, is able to get that crushing blow, and this is DLC crushing blow, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to kill. I love how Terminator just gives, like, hey, thumbs up. Yeah, Let's thumbs go. up. You're good. You're <laughs> fine. You're fine. You, you'll live. It's okay. It doesn't hurt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great jump and side switch there from King Gambler. Going to use the slide to corner carry as well. Terminator not getting much out of that teleport. The, oh, the overhead into Creeping Ice again. Okay, I think King Gambler expected the running man to be mm -hmm. fully completed, but instead was canceled into that punch. Now, with that string that we just saw from you pouring, that that's a great amount of pushback that if you don't flawless block, you're definitely getting mixed here. Yes, for sure. Ooh. Oh, and great trip guard there by you pouring. Just needs to get some chip damage here to get the round, and just the down four will close it out for him. I will say Euphoria really surprising me with this Terminator gameplay. I, I did not expect it to be so volatile in terms of damage mm -hmm. against King Gambler. I thought it was going to be a little harder to actually try to catch King Gambler off guard, but instead has actually been on top of it. But now King Gambler is going to start waking up here, actually getting a hit confirm and starting to load up the slide. Yeah, that whiff punish into the full 28% optimal right there for King Gambler. Oh, the flawless Ooh. block. On that hit of creeping ice, you pouring with the matchup knowledge. That is huge. And there goes that overhead catching King Gambler off guard, but you pouring still getting hit by the wake up of three. And King Gambler is going to win the air to air interaction. Yes, he is. Checking with that. Oh, gets the back two into the slide. Confirm. He also now has that slide KB loaded. And like we said before, like you were saying yesterday, that slide KB does as much as a fatal blow does. Oh, this is very much positive. But Euphoring thought that he actually was able to get the hit confirmed and unfortunately canceled into the Fatal Blow and it was still blocked. Yep. King Gambler able to take that first round, but he's here in the corner to start it off. And just the command grab here by Terminator, keeping Gambler in the corner, the overhead into the grab. Again, what's the guess? What's the mix? The overhead into the grab, into the side switch. You're staying here. Ooh. This is your home now. And that is a launching crushing blow, 38% in just a quick span of less than like 10 seconds right now. And the that flawless. flawless, the first flawless here no on Combo Breaker. And it was against King Gambler. Euphoria is just not letting go. All right, I need to talk to some of the Terminator down players, okay? Yeah, I think we need to talk with them, too. I don't know. I don't know about them. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. Oh, and King Gambler goes for the full forward two string. Gets a big punish. That's super, super minus on block. A good usage of the slide crushing blow. Now, that shotgun blast is a high, so that is why King Gambler chose to go for it. Great checks, though, on the teleport and the air-to-air. -air doing phenomenal job here from Euphoring side. It is a health of even. Yep, and King Gambler going to try to work his way out of this corner, Ooh. but gets kicked late. It's going to be really close. King Gambler does have Fatal Blow, but that's no going to be it. You fouring with the running man, just bear hugs King Gambler. Takes us 2-0. Notice that you fouring conditioned King Gambler with the running man. Started at the very beginning in game one, using it very much like just continuing the full running man and actually getting the tackle mm -hmm. and notice that he euphorian was actually canceling into some of the punches and kicks mm -hmm. forcing king gambler to second guess on the blocks yeah i mean really good conditioning especially here with a mixed character like terminator conditioning is the name of the game you want to be in your opponent's head you want them to think that they know what you're gonna do and do the exact opposite there's the teleport right away to try to get in and just command grab, amplified, thrown down. King Gambler gets hit by that forward kick as well. Good usage of the down one. Six frame down one is very clutch, especially from that teleport. But now Euphoring actually 
catching King Gambler with the overhead and really making King Gambler second guess. Look at that throw oh tech. And gosh. this is it. And you fouring on potential set point to try to get into top eight. You fouring is on a tear right now. He wants to secure that spot. Now, the thing we know about King Gambler is he can make a comeback from anywhere. He can yes. make that reverse 3-0. But Euphoria here is going to get a lot of damage. No breakaway available there. And going to go for the for crushing full blow. stomp. Crushing blow. Get 38% right there for Euphoria. To be honest, I have never seen King Gambler get mixed the way he mixes people. Yeah, I wonder what it feels like to be on the other foot. He's not going to cash out here. Just going to go for the slide. Goes for the short hop into jump and gets the escape failed loaded. That's going to be huge for him. He's definitely need to use it. Chooses not to use it now. Has a bit of a life lead. No need to. Gets the forward two into the ice ball and is going to be able to close out that round. Very good stuff there. Like you mentioned, don't count King Gambler out. Every round counts. And now, even though Euphoria may sit on potential set point, King Gambler can really make this the start of the reverse 3-0. And all it takes is that momentum. And there goes the teleport from Euphoria. And I love these pokes here to try to call out on some of what King Gambler is trying to do here. Goes for the shotgun blast and gets the restand with the overhead. But look at this life lead that Euphoring has. No way. Oh my god. Gets no. the grab into the throw. It's just chip damage here. Whoa. And the trade. Euphoring takes it 3-0 over King Gambler. Securing that top eight spot, King Gambler is going to be sent down to the lower bracket and have to try to make his run back from there. This is probably one of the biggest upsets I, in today's matches. I am mind blown. I mean, it's not necessarily that Euphoring wasn't going to beat King Gambler. It's It was a 3-0 and it was with Terminator which I am mind blown by right now. I'm, I'm actually very shocked. I really expected this to go to like a game five, but Euphoring really came out. And again, I, I mentioned this yesterday during the pools matches. Euphoring, I think this was with Ragnarok uh, when we were watching Euphoring. This is a player that every time he appears in the bracket, you don't know what to expect. Yeah. Literal dark horse or mystery horse, yeah. and you don't know what's coming. You you truly do not know where or what Euphoria is thinking. And honestly, that Terminator was exactly what a lot of people I feel like at home seeing that bracket and making their their previews or their bracket predictions. Yes, of course. Uh, we're getting mixed very much so. Yeah, for sure. I mean, what a mix that was! Absolutely an insane battle from both of them. And, I mean, if you guys thought that we were done with keeping you on the edge of your seats, we're not. We're not in the least. We have a crazy match coming up next. It's going to be the last match here on winner's side for the top 24. And we're going to be getting the second Chilean twin, Nicolas, versus Too Easy. Indeed. Now, of course... This is going to secure the fourth spot in top eight mm -hmm. on the winner's side. Uh, if too easy or if Nicolas goes to the loser's side, they do have to make that run back. But uh, currently, if you're just tuning in now, uh, we have full auto in winner's side top eight. We have Scorpion Prox in winner's side top eight. We just got Euphoring on the winner's side of top eight. And now we are waiting for the winner of Nicholas versus Too Easy. Now, something I know and I love talking to Too Easy every time we talk about, because Too Easy plays a lot of different games. He mm -hmm. plays platform fighters. He plays other 2D games. Mm -hmm. He plays some anime games as well. Mm -hmm. um, something that I've spoken to him about that helps like manage and fits his play style is the fact that Too Easy plays characters that makes you very much anxious and yes. very much annoyed. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he does that in other games because I have seen it in Mortal Kombat. I have not had the pleasure of seeing him compete in other games, but I, I believe it. I know that people who like to play Rushdown will play Rushdown everywhere. If they like to play Grapplers, they'll play Grapplers in every game. If they like the zone, they'll generally stick with the same style of gameplay because it suits them. It suits mm -hmm. how they like to pace the game. And if Too Easy likes to keep people on their toes, then we will see it.
Yeah, this is a button check, of course. So they're just checking out, making sure everything's working and looking good. Uh, but of course, this is also Nicholas. Nicholas is very much well aware of many of these characters. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, Nicholas and Scorpion Prox, even though they do go back to back and forth often, uh, Nicholas is the one that really I feel like shows off the most in terms of character loyalty. Mm -hmm. uh, you will see Nicholas really try to make the character work more yeah. so than rather Scorpion Prox who will just jump onto the to the character that makes the most sense in the matchup. Yeah, I definitely agree. Uh, Nicholas seems very, like, with his picks, he seems very confident and comfortable. Of course he has at least two or three characters that he can play at the top of the top level, but he's very comfortable with those and doesn't really go outside of that realm. Yeah, absolutely. And we are going to see the Fujin. I do see. I do know that Nicholas is one that does uh, Fujin a lot as mm -hmm. well, uh, more so than Scorpion Prox. Uh, Two Easy is going to look to go into uh, Sub Zero, which makes sense. Talk about being uneasy. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. Um, now I know that uh, with Too Easy, he has uh, Sub Zero. He has Scorpion. And he does have a Cetrion. Yes. If it doesn't work out, there is a chance he might go the Scorpion, but I highly doubt I it. Doubt I think this it. is a this is a chance to really show off the matchup between Sub Zero and Fujin. Yeah, I could definitely see the switch, but not the Scorpion necessarily. Cetrion, I think, would be pulled out before Scorpion would be, especially at this high level of competitive gameplay, fighting for a top eight spot. Here we go, heading into it. Hope you guys are ready. Nicholas versus Knights Too Easy. Here we go. And there begins the wind pull. This is crucial in uh, Fujin's game plan as the wind pull allows that back one as well as bringing in uh, your opponent very closely and also can lead into the wind push. But there goes that flawless block up too. Oh no, but the second down two actually completely whipping. Yeah, and able to, oh, the forward two into the creeping ice here. But oh my goodness, look at that life lead by Nicholas, and he should be able to finish out the round right there, taking the first round of this first match pretty handedly over too easy. You ever wonder, because I saw the taunt there from uh, uh, Fujin, mm -hmm. you ever wonder what it feels like to be a wind god? You know, I wish I was a wind god. I wish I could just jump and run out of the corner anytime that a Liu Kang corners me. <laughs> Ooh, what a slide. And actually going into the Skywalker cancel for a t uh, tornado as well. And too easy getting caught by it too. Yep, the back one into the wind push. It's keeping it. S oh, the reversal punish. He didn't keep it safe. Didn't have the bar or didn't spend it. Very good stuff here from Nicolas. Actually breaking that breakaway, leading into quite a bit of damage, and now we're in this <laughs> full screen position here. Yeah, Nicolas just happy to sit full screen and start using the interactables. <gasps> wow. Jumps in over the ice ball and just back one to close it out. Nicolas is taking this first match, and it's on the board 1-0 over too easy as they fight it out on winner's side of top 24. I like that Too Easy was trying to use the slide to get some movement in, but unfortunately it wasn't going to work out because of that full screen nature where Nicholas is using the wind push and pull to actually stop Too Easy, using the, the proper meter management as well. Yeah, Nicholas really being choosy, like you said, meter management, choosing when to amplify that wind push. But we started off with violence here, started off with a sub-zero amplified slide for the round. And nice too easy is going in. He's got the forward two in creeping ice. And the back three in hard knockdown. Tries to get the jump in, looking for the mix. Tries to go for down four. Now we do see the pickup here from Nicolas. And there goes the wind kicks. And backing away just a little bit, calling out to easy's down four as well. Tries to get the jump kick, goes for the grab. And this is a four grab, so this is gonna keep too easy in the corner. Yep, and a lot of pressure here from Nicolas, making up on that life lead. But look at that, that flawless block into the D2, guaranteed damage. And this should be the round here for Too Easy, looking to get on the board. Has Fujin in the corner. Most optimal as well, as Too Easy did not have uh, much bar, just gained back the attack bar here. Mm -hmm. And now we do see the breakaway happening from Too Easy, a flawless block, but not going to be able to up to her. Uh, due to the fact that there's no defensive meter, but what a whiff punish here from Too Easy. 
Yeah, that was a great one with Punish on the slide. Allows him to start the momentum forward, getting these optimals, using the KB, going ahead and cashing out. Look at this life lead that Too Easy has. He's going for the grab. He's going in aggressively, knows he has the momentum. And Nikolaus is going to try to slow it down. Uses the fatal blow. And I mean, I agree with this decision right now. He needs to get damage on the board. He needs to make sure that he's able to secure a round before Too Easy can take the match. That was a great amount. And look, because Too Easy went for the slide, not going to actually have the breakaway to continue. No meter. And Nikolaus winning that air to air interaction with just that fatal blow. That was really well done. Yeah, that was really smart on his part to spend the fatal blow. A lot of people are don't want to unless it's a win condition or unless it's third round. But that was so smart, it got him to the third round. Blocks the overhead into the ice ball. Going to get the side switch with that KB as well, but doesn't catch the roll out by too easy. While the side switch did happen, that is a great crushing blow to cash out because it does do a lot of damage. Mm -hmm. And now, really, Nikolas can just sit patiently, try to call out too easy slide. And uh, notice, too, already trying to ca catch on that uh, overhead to actually block. Yeah. Nikolas with a large life lead here. Just backing up, using that wind push, doesn't get punished for it. Perfect spacing and almost got the whiff push. Ooh. And right now, Too Easy does get the freeze. Not going to be able to. The great down one to stop the overhead. Good call. And Nicholas is now out of the corner and out of danger for now. Mm -hmm. Yep, he's just sitting full screen. Nicholas gets frozen. Ooh, no. What's Too Easy going to do? Doesn't get a confirm. No. Oh, my gosh. There oh. goes the fatal blow. Now, this will not kill, as this was definitely still earlier in the health. But now both players don't have Fatal Blow. And Nikolas with 88.6. <gasps> no! Chip oh, damage! The oh, the chip my damage! Too easy, able to secure it. And you see Nikolas there shaking his head. That was a good one. That was well done there from Too Easy. Cool, calm, and collected. Does have the ice ball blocked. Yep, and good jump in here from Nicolas. Going to be able to get the corner carry as well. 28% just like that, and good trade on the down ones as well. Forward for its plus, yep. You see the down one check right after by Too Easy. Looking to catch Nicolas pressing. Great jump one, though, from Nicolas. And now we're going to see the wing kicks from the side switch as well. Great flawless block off of the wake up down one. But Too Easy also responds with the wake up flawless block and gets the up two for some very nice damage. Yeah, how about that conversion, even with the gravity? And Nicolas, though, still able to clutch out that round. All right, let's see how they start this off. Down four, just trying to check. Oh, and just the slide amp from Too Easy right in the face. Back one side switch, gonna get the optimals here is Nicolas cashing out for 30% there. Only one bar used. It's crazy how both of these players and characters can dish out a minimum 30%. Yeah, and just they don't have to use both bars or anything. They can really conserve a lot of their resources. Great jump out from that grab on Nicolas's part and able to convert into the wind kicks. Ooh. He's been blocking the overhead and uses that to get the KB and Nicolas is up two to one. And Nicolas looking super solid, too easy, however, is might be thinking on the character change, which I can kind of see why. Nicolas is, isn't falling for the overheads as often as you would expect. But regardless, what a play here happening between these two. Too easy doing a phenomenal job trying to keep up with Nicolas and doing an exceptionally good job at it. Uh, it looks like we are still going to hear the Sub-Zero here against Fujin. I don't think it's a bad pick. I think it's working. I think it's just one of those things where you have to kind of slow Nicolas down a little bit more and really dish out damage. Yeah, I think the Sub-Zero is working for him here. It's not like it was a wash. It's not like he was getting absolutely run over by Nicolas. He was making things happen, and he just needs to make sure that he has more things going in his favor. Make sure that he's being smart with what he cho 
throws out and not getting interrupted like that by Nicolas. He has the matchup knowledge and knows where those gaps are. Loving the Skywalker, actually going in and then backdashing away to try to bait an, a move from Too Easy. And look here, Too Easy actually just straight up not blocking right now as Nicolas is sealing this first round. Oh my goodness, handedly sealing that, almost getting a flawless. And Nicolas here is sitting on set point, just needs one more round to secure that top eight spot. Okay, using the down two, however, that does leave Too Easy out of the corner, which uh, I get the damage, but you don't want to let Too Easy out of that corner. Yeah, what an interrupt again, though, by Nicolas, calling out that interrupt every single time with the jab. Down four checks here from Too Easy, trying to find his spacing. Jumps in, forward two, gets blocked, ice ball, and that's wow. going to be it. Nicolas is going to be our last person on winner's side top eight for mortal Kombat 11 taking it over too easy who's gonna need to fight his way through a heck of a loser's run that was such a good match from too easy i mean props to too easy for one getting a game off of the, the twins that's like extremely difficult yes. for many of the players here right but also for the fact that playing really well despite, you know, some of those mess ups that were happening. And yeah. again, Nicolas was very much well prepared. At the beginning we saw uh, we saw Nicolas actually getting hit by the overheads often, but instead started to block them more often. Yeah, definitely. I mean too easy was making some crazy reads, etc. And it was just Nicolas, it was that matchup knowledge. You could see it every single time he interrupted his strings, every time there was a flawless block and any flawless block gap. It's that matchup knowledge that really makes Nicolas that next tier level of player. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw Too Easy make a comeback and saw him in top eight for sure. Of course, not, not. Uh Again, not surprising at all. Now, let's talk a little bit as we are. Uh, again, if you're just tuning in now, we just saw the last top eight person to go into the winner's side. So now these couple of next matches, we're going to start working on filling the loser side of things. And this includes one of our first losers in top 24, mm -hmm. Ludi versus Poseidon. Now, we talked a little bit about Ludi. We will go ahead and talk a little bit more about Ludi uh, in just a moment, but let's talk about Poseidon. Yeah, let's talk about Poseidon. We saw him play yesterday. We were watching him play and he had a great run during pools, but King Gambler, he ran into King Gambler right at the end of pools and King Gambler was able to three him sending him to the losers side of the tournament but Poseidon a joker main through and through Ludi a cabal main through and through they have played each other so many times as well so they are going to know each other's play styles they're going to know what each other are going for and at this point it becomes a big mind game not only okay we know each other we've played each other not only that but we're on the loser's side. If you lose, you're out. They are fighting tooth and nail to get into that coveted top eight spot right now. Absolutely. Now, of course, Poseidon, one of the uh, Shrai Ryu? Yeah, he's Shrai Ryu TV. He's yep. one of the ones that runs it. Yep, indeed. Uh, definitely wanting to make that top eight. Again, yeah. if you weren't here yesterday, we mentioned a couple of times, Combo Breaker is home to many of games here in these tournament settings. However, this is probably the last year that Mortal Kombat 11 will be featured on this stage before we move over to Mortal Kombat 1. What does that mean? That means that this is one of the last places that you'll be able to seal your almost record in yeah. history uh, for this particular title. And for many of these players, they have been in top eights before, but they just have not yet received the one that counts it all, which is the free burrito. No, I'm just kidding. It's the, yes, win it's the winner. Counts. It's now a free burrito, which is still very much important. However, we do want to get that when we want to get that trophy at the For end of sure. the day. We want to get that medal no matter where in top eight. And both of these players, I mean, we know them both so well. They play all the time in online tournaments. We see them playing at offline tournaments. They are both players who are not going to crack under pressure. They know what they're going into. They played on stage before and they're both ready for this. They've both been studying up, grinding it out, and I'm really excited for this match. 
Yep, so this is a button check, but com considering that this is Cabal and Joker, we got two, I see this, I actually see this often on PlayStation Fight Nights, actually. Mm -hmm. um, not necessarily Ludi, I see more of like Akira Japo, but and, and Jet Ring. Now, this can go either way. And it all depends on the Joker, believe it or not. Yeah, every Joker does play differently. I actually didn't get to see which variation uh, Poseidon is playing. He does like to play Boing, but I'm not sure if that would be good against Cabal. Using that forward two to try to anti-air Cabal. And it's going to be big for Poseidon to not let Cabal get his game plan going. Because it, both of these characters, as soon as they start to be able to enforce their plus frames, their setups, etc., it's going to be really hard to get on the offensive. Okay, great pressure right now from Ludi. However, actually going for the crushing blow. That's right, the throw uh, escape fail was loaded for Ludi. Yep, and going to go ahead and use that to secure the round. Smart move by Ludi. Ooh, it does not look like uh, Poseidon was able to hit confirm into the boxing glove, so that is going to cost him 26%. And mind you, it's really important to keep in mind the amount of health that Joker has, because everything hurts double. Yeah, that is true. Um, 950 health is going to be a big factor in this. Joker Great. just needs to hold that. Plus frames, you have to hold that. All right, the back throw, sticking Ludi into the corner. Poseidon is looking to get his jack-in-the-box setups. There we go, see them here. Oh, and the throw again from Ludi, able to just jump in MP throw a couple of times. Okay, that is plus indeed from that kick. And we do have to hold the mid, but great stagger here from Ludi, actually going for a throw, and now it's only just a couple of hits more. The air-to-air -air from Poseidon, he has that oh, no. cancel. And we're going to see the crushing blow here. It's not going to be enough to kill, but only 33% left for Ludi. And Poseidon is just going to close out that round. That stand four from Joker does wonders. It's, I love the way that he like swings his kick. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, I think what was the difference or the missing piece in this variation was actually he has the, the jack in the box on the low. So mm -hmm. he can actually set up some of it. Yeah. And there goes Ludi with the full damage, 32%. Tried to call out a breakaway, but was not able to catch it as Poseidon's definitely not biting. Yeah, and Kapow is, there's very few characters on the roster that can uh, actually uh, punish Kapow. And a lot of them have to flawless block to do it. We didn't see a flawless block there from Ludi. So both of them just sitting, zoning a bit. Ludi trying to work his way in, but good anti-air there from Poseidon. Ooh. But the anti-air back from Ludi. Is this going to be enough damage to close out the round? No, 13% left. What's the move? Poseidon has the cancel, but just the down one poke from Ludi going to take that first man. Very good stuff there from Ludi. Looking solid against the Joker matchup. Very comfortable as well. Mm -hmm. um, of course, it's a bit of a back and forth right now, and rightfully so. Um, I think what we do have to just kind of keep in mind is that Ludi is a loyalist mm -hmm. for Cabal. Yes. And uh, we'll definitely have all of the opties on board. And it shows. It really does show. And when you're playing a 950 health club character, that is not fun. Yeah. And Poseidon does have pocket characters that I've seen him play. He definitely has a spawn. He has uh, a couple other characters. But I believe he's been training up for this tournament as Joker. And I think he's going to stick with Joker for that reason. Yeah, absolutely. I th uh, we might have seen a slight change in variation. Uh, but Good. great throw tech there. Oh, and great spacing on Poseidon. They're able to get the double D2 30% and send the exploding Jack in the Box full screen as well. Trade there. It's not going to be good for Poseidon when they trade that because Letty's Buzzsaw is going to do so much more damage. What an anti-air. And there goes the armor break, but not going to cash it out. Instead, going to wait on it. Yeah, doesn't decide to spend that crushing blow. I guess he's assuming he might be able to get it later on in the match again. Poseidon enforcing these plus frames on the jack in the box, jumps in. Bit of a stagger game right now from Ludi. Yep. Just trying to somehow get out of this corner, jumps, but not going to be able to get it. And Poseidon with these anti-airs from the forward, too. Yeah, those backdashes as well, allowing him to outspace Ludi. 
and right there uses the jack in the box and is able to close out that first round against Ludi. There goes the projectile here from Ludi. Goes for the down one check and the walk up. Definitely saying, nope, this time it's my turn. Try to press the button. 34% practically meterless, by the way. Yeah, which is ridiculous damage meterless. Oh, I like that. A great knowledge tech there with the down four of Cabal actually avoiding the gloves. Yeah, it was because the gloves are high and he was able to low profile it. Oh, using the cancel to get the jump in on the cross up. Big damage coming here from Poseidon, getting the double D2, 33% on the board like that. And they are even in, oh my what? God. Oh my Lord. I, these players are so crazy thinking that they're gonna be going with those fatals, those, but it works, okay, it works. It works. As soon as he saw that bat get pulled out before he got shot, he was like, fatal blow, this is it, close out the round. He will not have that going into the final round though. Ooh, tried to start with Kapow to start the match. I mean, I get it. It can kind of work, but <laughs> Ludi has moves that are able to leave Cabal very much low profile to the ground. Yeah, that is true. And Ludi able to get the jump to in side switching here, getting the full optimal and putting Joker in the corner. Lots of pressure here. Poseidon going to get the back throw and switch it. But look at that life lead he has to come back on. Lots of work to do. A down one check from Ludi, and look, this is kind of getting really close, oh, but the down two crushing blow, breaking away early. Yeah, and Poseidon now has access to that fatal blow cancel as well, which allows for different setups, allows for him to get Ooh. a grab, but Ludi was waiting for it with the tech. Poseidon opens up, not gonna be enough to kill here, but they're almost even on health. Oh, the, the short, short hop. hop! Wake the up, wake up, up! And oh, the grab! The tech. Oh, oh my god, my the gosh. air to air, Poseidon clutches it out right there, bringing it one to one against Ludi. Everyone sat up in their seat. Oh we my sat god. up in our seat. <laughs> Ludi sat up on our seat. Uh, everybody in the audience sat up in their seat. We are extremely hyped right now. Oh my god. Yeah, if you guys are not out of your seat right now, I don't know what you're doing. This is insane MK for you. And there goes the Jack in the Box and brings out the Batman shot, not gonna get the double down two and unfortunately was still in recovery from the down two mm -hmm. on that second one. And this is gonna be 34%, you are paying for that. Yeah, and here's the confirm into the Kapow. See if Kabal used breakaway and he was waiting for the breakaway with the armor break but did not catch Ludi. Ludi just gets the escape bail loaded as well and that's gonna be really big if he wants to close out a round. Great anti-air on the cross up there as well for Ludi. No breakaway for Poseidon, and that's going to close out the first round for Ludi. Ludi still trying to stay alive, even though it's technically, uh, I believe, actually, yep. Going for these checks right now. Tries to get the counter hit. Yep. Big launcher. Big damage. Hard knockdown into 33% into another slight gas jump in. What do you do? How do you get out of this? Yeah, this is very scary right now here. But oh, oh but the wake up of three and actually putting uh, Ludi in the corner for it. It's actually not that bad. But Ludi now going up 2-1. Yeah, 2-1. And you can see Poseidon there sitting there thinking about it, going to fighter select, going to take a second and regain his composure. Like we said, people are definitely encouraged to do this. You take a second. You think about the match. You think about adaptation. That's why a lot of these are first to three because adaptation plays a huge role in these competitive settings. Being able to change your play style, being able to see how your other player is playing and exploit any mistakes that they're making. So we have jumping jester, we have boxing gloves. Yep. I think there was something else there that I wasn't able to catch. I think Kapow might take two slots. It, it might be. It might be Kapow. I think it needs to take two spots. <laughs> <laughs> Personally. No. I'm not sure if we missed something else. All right. Ludi up 2-1 against Poseidon. Yeah, Ludi looking to keep on his loser's run. Poseidon looking to stay alive in this tournament. Great usage of the down four. 
Yep. Actually interrupting many of the strings that Ludi is trying to, or rather Poseidon is trying to dish out. Ooh, the short hop again get, doesn't get called out for it. Oh, great spacing from Poseidon there with the backdash. Going to get Kapow and full optimals in the corner with the hard knockdown. Look, oh my god, look at this life lead for Poseidon. He's going to close Ooh. out the round just like that. Like I said, that adaptation, sitting in character select and thinking about what to do can make all the difference. Indeed. Great conversion off of the amplified Jack in the Box coming down from the air as well. Oh, I like the interrupt, but unfortunately, Ludi's not going to be able to hit him from off of it. Was not uh, confident inside the punish, was just more like, can I even press here? But this might be going into game five, Miss V6. Oh, no. You know what that means. Ooh, let's see if Ludi can clean this up. Has 119 health. 119 can health and a dream, but he does have Poseidon in the corner here. You can't call Cabal out at all. He is such a momentum character. Look at this damage he's about to put out. Keep Poseidon in the corner, force the break away. They both have Fatal Blow on lock as well. The escape belt is not loaded. Poseidon now has access to that Fatal Blow cancel. Good tech. Yeah, very nice tech. Definitely closing in on the fact that a throw can kill Poseidon. Oh, there oh goes the projectile. Oh my god, the chip. Just chip here. Poseidon going for the chip. Good ducks. Oh, gets oh, caught. Oh, wow. Oh, and you can see from Poseidon there, he's mad they got caught by that, but he's got to keep his composure and head right into this final round. Poseidon looking to bring us to a game five. You know, unfortunately, because the bat projectile is a high, it's really frustrating. I get his frustration. Whereas uh, Ludi's just able to throw a projectile. And I, I think, if I'm not mistaken, Cabal's is also a high as well. Unless yes. it gets metered burn and then it's a mid. Yes, I, I believe that is true. And gets the escape fail loaded on that grab. We've seen Ludi using that so well. The air-to-air -air trade from both of them. Ooh, actually getting the stray hit in. Uh, unfortunately, Poseidon not able to get the down two. There it goes that down two into the second one. Yeah, double down two and sets up the Jester. Poseidon looking to slowly close in on this space using the breakaway. Doesn't want to get opened up right now without any defensive meter at all. Absolutely, and Ludi going for the down one checks to try to get something here. Unfortunately, getting opened up. Oh, no! the fatal blow, and that's no going to be way. enough to kill with the 950 health. Wow. We see the handshakes and GG's. Poseidon so close to bringing that to a game five so many How times. How much health was that? Oh, that was. That was like 1.0, yeah. Miss V6. Yeah. I think I, I saw it just like at the tip of that, and yeah. like. What? Oh my goodness, oh my that's gosh. gotta hurt. That is so heartbreaking. Unfortunately, that is the end of Poseidon's run and yes. Ludi's conti continues on. Uh, up next, we will have Sunio versus Gur. However, we're gonna take a quick break before we get into that hype matchup. I definitely got hit. That Ooh. was wild, man. These matches have been great. Oh, absolutely. You know what? We're about to take a quick break here, and Combo Breaker 2023 is still going on. Uh, don't worry. This time, we're going to order for yeah, it. Yeah, we got you. Don't, don't even worry about Be it. Be right back. Don't forget to head on over to the Combo Breaker shop to check out all the amazing merch. But don't delay, because that merch is going to go quick. Welcome back, everyone, to some more Mortal Kombat 11 Top 24 action here. Again, my name is Saki. This is Miss Meeseeks. And if you were just tuning in before the break, we can confirm that Ludi has made it to the loser side of Top 8, one of the first players to reach on the uh, loser side of Top 8. Yeah, he secured that spot in such a scramble of a match. And yes. I mean, that was so close on both parts but we're going to be heading into the match of Mustard versus Zintai. We're going to see the Frost versus the Shang if they go with their mains, of course. I don't want a commentator's curse here. And both of them right now are fighting 
to get to play too easy in the next round, and then if they beat too easy, get into top eight. Yes. So, I believe also, check out that medal there, uh, Miss Misi. Oh, the, the Primal Rage one? Yes, I believe it was Mustard that actually, uh, if did not take it, was in second place. Yeah, I think Ketchup got first place, yeah. Mustard got second place. They were absolutely dominating the Primal Rage bracket yesterday. What a terror. <laughs> so it's awesome to see, quite honestly. I'm sure that they're very happy with that. But... Regardless, this is now time for some more combat, and this is going to be Mustard versus Shang, or rather versus Zintai. <laughs> versus Shang. Frost versus Shang. That's what I meant to say. <laughs> <laughs> no, Zintai, Shang, they pretty much go together, to be honest. Yeah. Zintai been playing, has been playing Shang for such a long time, and it's a really strong Shang. Plays multiple variations of him uh, depending on the matchup. We'll see what he's going in for. We see the Hell Sparks right away, and Zintai starting off here. And we're seeing the cryogenic head being run by Mustard. Going to get some uh, freeze setups with that head, if possible. Forces the player to block and possibly get a grab for Frost. Really hard to play against. Yeah, this is actually quite difficult to play this type of matchup here, especially because the head, uh, you have to be able to set it up properly. And that's not counting the fact that Zintai can do exactly that. Gets the crushing blow and already wins the first game or first round. Yeah, and I mean, Shang has so many good crushing blows that he's able to use in just his regular strings. He has that overhead crushing blow. We just saw the foot crushing blow. There's a lot of options for Shang. And also, Shang is going to be able to zone Frost out every single time with those Hell Sparks if he needs to, which is not even going to allow her to start with the head setups. Yeah, this is actually probably Mustard its toughest obstacle course. Now, remember from yesterday, Mustard actually lost to Sunio, and that is where the loser side of the progress or the journey has done. So now this is another, I would say, equally as tough zoner and obstacle course. Yeah, I mean, Frost is going to struggle against the zoner. She has a couple projectiles, but it's not really going to allow her to Ooh. zone as much. And that could have been an opportunity to punish right now, but Mustard still trying to stay alive has the fatal blow but zintai seals the deal gets the combo into the hell sparks yeah zintai looking very comfortable in this matchup able to just hell sparks able to just trade it over over and over again like he has been able to zone frost this entire match so far immediately you see as it starts he's back dashing corpse drop explosion Ooh. gets caught by the cryogenic head though and here comes mustard he can start his setup start enforcing some plus frames and see what he can do zintai actually got a little bit too greedy there with the corpse drop but what an anti-air there from mustard looking very solid now one thing that we do probably need to see from mustard though is trying to flawless block the hell sparks that yeah. is extremely important uh, especially because that's going to allow that pushback to not happen. Yeah, exactly. And it's also going to just allow for so much less shit, but the launcher there on the last hit of Hell Sparks and good meaty with the fireball by Zintai here. Zintai, oh, just backing up, perfect spacing, knows exactly where he needs to be to catch Frost if she tries to jump Ooh. in and just goes with the soul suck to end the round there. That was actually a nice trace there from Zintai as well yeah frost just trying to figure out the spacing here throws the far head zintai able to get again that knockdown in the corner and is now able to enforce some of his closer buttons there's a lot of buttons and normals and strings that shang has that are not punishable okay and zintai still stuck in the corner gets hit by that low and mustard actually applying some pressure oh but was just not able to avoid that last amped ground spark. Yeah, gets the hell sparks again, into it again, into exploding corpse drop over and over. It's the same game plan, and until Mustard can make him not do it, why not stick with what's working? Oh, that forward two was going to be so interesting for Mustard, but unfortunately, there's just nothing you can do. Realistically, yeah, you have to go back to Fire Select. This is not yeah. working. The Cryogenic Crown is just not doing the job that it needs to do. And again, the only time it's actually working is when Zintai makes the mistake. Yeah, exactly. Mustard is not able. Cryogenic Crown, it's so important to be able to get the person where you want them. Once you start Cryogenic Crown, once you get the first one to hit, it's a lot easier to set it up but it just wasn't working in Ketchup's favor. So I'm wondering what he's gonna go with instead. 
Oh, wait a minute. I think we're still seeing the same. Oh, yeah. Maybe he was just taking a second to think about the matchup and head on back into the next one. Hmm, interesting. Very interesting. Yeah, I'm surprised he's not using, I don't know the name of the move, but Frost has those far uh, high ice balls that she can send. Oh, uh, yeah, the ice bombs. That is, it, It's an option, but I, I, I don't think it should count because it still counts as a physical, but it's also still hard to set up as well. You're, you're going to have to deal with corpse drops, for example. That's true. That's very true. Yeah, those were what I was talking about right there. Okay, the shurikens, yeah. Yeah, the shurikens. And, like, it's going to at least give her a little bit of an option to poke back at Zintai, but still Shang going to have the upper hand here when it comes to zoning. I also think I saw Zintai might be running shake, so if he can read those projectiles, he can just shake and uh, punish Frost Oh, no. It. That would have been a perfect way to punish, especially after rolling out of the corner. But Zintai is just ready for Mustard. There goes that down yep. four from Zintai. Yep, the pokes here from Shang. And just using the Hell Sparks even just to create the spacing. Oh, just the dash up forward throw. Get some health back from that as well. Zintai happy to just poke into Hell Sparks and just ending that round with his normals. Yeah. This is, I think, this is so tough for Mustard. This is unfortunately one of the characters that doesn't do too well against Shang, and this is one of the reasons the amount of zoning that Shang can do in just this custom variation makes quite a difficult time. Um, and you don't really have a way to get in unless you actually apply, like, for example, the flawless blocks on the Hell Sparks. Um, and even then, you have to worry about so much. It's a full on obstacle course to just try to get even a moment to start up. Yeah, great jump in there from Zintai, able to get the conversion as well and just get those pokes. He has such a huge life lead right now to play with, but Mustard fighting back here, getting 22% on the board, but scared to move in. Oh, there we yeah. go. This is Keep really the tough. Restand. Gets the head set up in the corner. This is where Mustard wants to be. Oh, oh what a block there from Zintai, and this is chip damage. Yep, using the back to full on string. GG's to both players, and Zintai will not be making it to top eight just yet. Not Actually yet. has to play against too easy in order to be able to get into the top eight. Unfortunately, this is the end of the run for Mustard, but amazing job. You'll definitely be catching them on top eight, though, with Ragnarok. So don't worry. You're going to see more of Mustard. Yes. We promise. We promise. Of course. Now, okay, Miss, Miss Me Seeks. Yes. I'm, I'm going to be real here. Okay, okay, be real with me. T give it to me straight. Okay. Uh, I'm rooting really hard for Parsa. Okay. In this next match. This next match is going to be Parsa versus King Gambler for top eight. And I'm sorry. I'm rooting for my boy Parsa. Well, if you're going to go with Parsa, then I'll go with Gambler, <laughs> and we can even it out. Okay? Exactly, exactly. All That's right. why I need, I need your help here. I'm going to back up my boy Joey. I want to see him in top eight. I think he's been working his ass off, and I know that you are a huge Parsa fan. I and am. want to see him in that top eight as well. So we will we'll cast this each hurts. other out. This hurts really much. Because yeah, because either one of these losses. It's going to be so heartbreaking. Oh, no. I love both of these players with so... Like, oh man, I, I can't, this is, this is so heartbreaking, I can't do it. Why did they make me do this? Why did this happen? Why can't everybody get a trophy? I know. <laughs> oh man, Parsa HP, if you don't know him, this is a noob Cybot player, one of the best noobs mm -hmm. and most well-known, has been trying to break the ninth place curse though. Yes. Since many of the majors been attending since last year mm -hmm. and the year before, and has come so, so close to it too, every single time. And honestly, it just comes down to playing against some of the strongest players. It's just you end up with a player like King Gambler. And honestly, if you look at how King Gambler has played in the last few days, there's moments where King Gambler really just clutches up and, like we've mentioned before, not afraid to get that comeback factor. Yeah, that's very true. King Gambler, a very composed player. I actually haven't had the... Uh pleasure of getting to see Parsa play at and offline yet. So I really am excited to see how well composed he stays as well. Um, how do you feel about this matchup, about the Noob Cybot Sub-Zero matchup, the battle of the brothers? I was going to say, this is like a lore battle, <laughs> to I mean, be honest. It's literally a lore battle. You thought so Scorpion Sub-Zero <laughs> was a lore battle? No, because they're friends in MK11. In MK11, Noob Cybot comes in, he says, 
What brother? <laughs> <laughs> uh, honestly, this is a matchup that Parsa does really well against. Okay. The problem is the mentality in this matchup. And why is it the mentality? Because you get hit by that overhead once from Sub-Zero and you're questioning everything. And quite honestly, for Parsa to be able to win this, we kind of need to look back at another match, which was Nicholas versus uh, Too Easy. Mm -hmm. Notice that even though Nicholas kept getting hit by overheads, at one point in time, he was just so confident to block mm -hmm. the overhead and then the ice balls that it allowed him to not even really worry about it and really affect the game plan. Same thing with Euphoring is also where King Gambler went down and was not able to get the top eight spot on the winner's side. Euphoring wasn't afraid of Joey's mix at all. Yeah. And that is where Parsec honestly needs to kind of keep in mind don't mm -hmm. be afraid if you get hit by it you get hit by it don't let it affect what you're going to do next because king gambler is ready for it yeah that is true king gambler is ready for any situation but i feel like parsa is as well at this point this late into the tournament you are getting the top players they know every matchup inside and out and they're ready to exploit anything any mistake that their uh, opponent makes also, do want to give a quick shout out to the island crew. That is Parsa's Island uh, team, They're filled with many amazing players, including Butterpunch, uh, as well as Ultimate Wielder, Herbs himself. So huge shout outs to them. They've been training and be prepared for these next games. Yes. All right. Down four, forward four, and enforcing those plus frames, getting the grab off of it is King Gambler. And the down four again, trying to go for the overhead is Parsa. One big thing that is going to play a big role in this matchup is Nuke gets so much chip damage. But look at this damage coming out from King Gambler, getting the guaranteed D2 and the escape build on the grab right there. King Gambler is running over Parsa right now. Yeah, I think Parsa was trying to catch up, but here it goes. This is a great punish, and this is going to do quite a bit of damage as well. Going to go for the second teleport, 39%. Very nice, but unfortunately, just go for the grab. Probably expecting that there was going to be a roll from King Gambler. Yeah. And sub, or, uh, Noob Saibok can dish out that damage like Spawn can, like Shao Kahn can. With only one bar, he can get 40 plus percent. And so it, he can definitely make comebacks quicker than Sub-Zero is going to be able to. There's also so much chip damage on that shadow slide, even if it's blocked. It's Fair. just going to be so much coming out. This is a great opportunity for Parsa. Look how he is just playing this neutral mm -hmm. and using the slide to kind of keep away. Also, really trying hard not to get caught by that overhead. Let's try to go for the high button here. But King Gambler responding with the flawless block up too. There's the block right there from Parsa and Gorgeous here. And actually, King Gambler is going to have to hold the damage, but no, drops the combo. Yeah, King Gambler getting that D2, saw the drop combo, took the opportunity, but the air to air here from Parsa just needs one more confirm, but King Gambler is going to have Fatal Blow on lock like that, and he is going, this should kill. Yeah, yes. this should kill. This is going to kill. The last hit. He's yeah. going to take that first game over Parsa. You know, didn't want to commentators curse them, never quite sure on that scaling. <laughs> Oh yeah, I, I agree. But, uh, but thankfully, this is a character that has a thousand health compared to some of the other characters that we've yeah. really seen them, and they've just been like in the 950 club. <laughs> yeah, or they're like at like 1100, and you think it's gonna kill, and it just doesn't. Okay, big right. spacing right now, full screen. Yeah, full screen. Oh, good jump there for Gambler. Noob Saibot's such a cool character. He is. The he most really edgy is. character, but he's still so very much a cool, cool character. Edgy boy, but he's awesome. Good blocks here from Parsa. Honestly, both players are just trying to find a spacing. Yeah. One mistake is all these players need to dish out damage. Yeah, that's true. And Parsa trying to space with those shadow moves. Also, if he can load up 10 shadow moves, he gets access to the KB as well. No! Oh, but King Gambler with the ice ball is able to corner carry. And now we're in King Gambler's court. Parsa able to get him off, though. This is a good opportunity for Parsa to try to keep away out of that corner. Now that is plus, but actually chooses to challenge mm -hmm. and go for the down one check. Not going to get the full conversion off of the air, but there goes the slide, and we are in this neutral range. Oh. The forward four. 
Goes for the jump in. Parsa is going to be able to close out that first round. Really playing patiently was working a lot better for Parsa, making sure that King Gambler has to pay it, play at his pace. But King Gambler is able to get that escape failed on the throw, which is a huge win condition. Gets the mix. Using the slide to also get the pushback is so crucial for Noob Saibot. Mm -hmm. But there goes that overhead, and now King Gambler able to get the side switch and continue. Yep, able to get the slide into the corner. Blocks the slides and just checking here, checking with safe strings, and he's able to get the ice ball. This is going to close out the round for King Gambler, and Parsa is starting in the corner. He's going to need to use this moment to make space to get out of the corner. Oh, wow. King Gambler just dashed up and grabbed. And because of the fact that it's a back throw and the crushing blow was loaded, just chose to use the crushing blow. Yeah, I mean, I think that was the smart idea from him. He can go ahead and get the slide into the corner here. Parsa using the breakaway. Oh, getting the D2 on the high as well. Double D2, going to be the best damage there for Noob Saibot. Yeah, probably was hoping for King Gambler to use the breakaway option right now, but Parsa is also playing really good. Both uh, health bars still even here. Yeah, Parsa going for that launcher, not quite able to get it, but instead he's able to get the 113 into the shadow slide. Now we do have to keep in mind King Gambler may go for a slide here, but there we go. Parsa able to get his own slide, and now it is tied one to one. One to one. Let's go. We have a match on our hands. Remember, this is to get into top eight. This is their last chance. They are on the loser side of brackets. There is no more chances. This is how they have to get to top eight. Like I said, heartbreaking. <laughs> I know this is this is a <laughs> tough match because you have King Gambler that has literally been dominating in the offline space nonstop in these last couple of tournaments that mm -hmm. have been happening. And this is one of the last two majors for Mortal Kombat 11. You have Parsa who's also been grinding as well these offlines. It is just, the, nobody's going home happy yeah. to be honest. It's fine. <laughs> All right. King Gambler trying to close the gap here. Looking out for that slide though, ready to block at any point. Gets the back throw. Down four checks, good flawless block on that chip as well. Not trying to eat the chip from the slide. And Gambler is just going with throw city here. Definitely throw loops are happening, but Parsa able to win the air to air. And now this is about to be a battle of the pokes, but look at this reversal punish. Very few people actually punishing Nuke Saibot's slide. Yeah, and Gambler able to get the ice ball in the corner as well. This is not going to be enough to kill. The D2 is going to get Parsa out of the corner, but just that 1-2-4 is going to close out that round for King Gambler. Oh, the forward two whiffs, and Parsa is going to take full advantage of this. Even though King Gambler broke away, he still ate 30% for that. This is actually a great round for Parsa. Look how dominant he's being right now. Yeah. Oh, but then again, there goes that reversal punish. King Gambler has already showed that he knows how to punish the slide. And Parsa has to be careful. Goes for the down two attempt and gets the crushing blow. And this is going to be all the damage that Parsa wrote. And we are tied round to round. Yeah, heading into this third round, King Gambler does have that slide KB loaded. Both of them have Fatal Blow unlocked. This is going to be a really close battle. King Gambler getting the trade with the forward four and jumping in. Oh. oh, I like that option. To prevent from getting frozen, Parsa decided to break away and that is able to at least keep him and actually keep the damage going. Yep, forces the breakaway again. Great anti-air conversion there from King Gambler. Oh, the back three able to get an ice ball off. Creeping ice into the KB. Why not spend it? King Gambler with a huge life lead right now. Yeah, that is plus, and that is going to go into the grab, though. Has to be careful. Flawless blocks attempts, but there goes the down three into the jump one. Yeah, and Gambler is able to take this two to one. He's looking to close this out as soon as possible. Close that top eight slot. He does not want this going to a game five, but Parsa is playing so well. He's able to cash out and dish out on that damage every single time King Gambler doesn't have breakaway. 
and is taking advantage of that. He's taking advantage of the spacing, and I am really love seeing how Pars is playing right now. I know. It's it's honestly really tough to see because Pars is, like, I wouldn't even say nobody's doing anything wrong. It's just when you make a mistake in game, it's going to cost the both of them, right? So this is something that Pars is just trying to think here what to do. Again, this is the potential last time that yeah. uh, Parsa has. And if it goes into a game five, oh. we're going for Kotal. We're getting a Kotal switch here. Kotal. Kotal, he's going to be running command grab, con cut, and I didn't see the third one. Uh, I believe it's Grand Discus. Oh, Grand Discus. All yeah. right. So we are seeing the regular Kotal variation as we are used to seeing. I'm a little bit scared, but I know he's been working with Aztec extensively Okay. to uh, actually follow up here and, and play this matchup. So... I mean, if there's anyone to learn Kotal from, Aztec is one of the greats. He loves to praise the sun and uh, definitely is going to show how to play this matchup. All right. And there we Gambler. go, King Gambler starting yeah. it up, getting the Frozen, able to get the launcher. And now, of course, with King Gambler, you want to optimize all the damage possible mm -hmm. because of the fact that uh, this is a character with, <laughs> he, uh, well, it used to be 1100 health. This is 1050 now. But there goes this command grab and already starting off nice and easy. Going to yeah. get that power buff. Forward two into the launcher as well. Forward two four is going to be a huge tool for closing space for Kotal Khan every single time. But Gambler is able to get a huge punish here into the corner. Is he going to go ahead and spend it and yep. take the round? Oh no, there's still 44 health left on the line. 1050 character, you have to be careful about Our it, but King Gambler, Gambler does clean it up. Yeah, he does, and Gambler is sitting on set point right now, trying to solidify that top eight placement against Parsa. Okay, going for that down four, and then getting the command grab, goes for the four two into the Grand Discus. Yep, the one two checks here from King Gambler. Jumps in, gets that back three into the ice ball, into the side switch. Gets the down two as well, expecting the breakaway. Great grab here from King Gambler to continue pressure. Gets the cross up side switch, another side switch, and keeps Parsa in this quarter. Not gonna get the down two ender though. Yeah, Gambler takes that knockdown better than getting tick throwed into the command grab. Oh, that could have been a crushing blow, but instead going for the breakaway, King Gambler's gonna get scooped up. Now we do have to be careful. This is one overhead into Fatal Blow, and oh we get gosh. scooped again. Just the raw command grab, Parsa does it. They both have Fatal Blow on lock if needed. The trade, these blocks from King Gambler. Oh, the anti-air! Anti oh my gosh, Parsa. Parsa staying alive right now. Yeah, clutched it out with that anti-air. What a beautiful read from him. And we're going into a final round right here. Parsa trying to take us to a game five. Okay, not gonna be able to get the jump one because of the fact that King Gambler was very much low profiled. Yeah, and we see Parsa, that's now the second time he's been able to anti-air uh, King Gambler's jump in one, jump in two and he's showing that that's not going to really be an option for King Gambler as much anymore to open him up. And okay. look at this, Parsa has a huge amount of momentum forcing Gambler into such a defensive area. He blocked it, he blocked the overhead and gets the crushing blow on it, and this is another scoop for Parsa. This isn't going to be enough to kill, but it's so close for Parsa. King Gambler has a lot of life to make up for. He's going, oh my god, the momentum here for Gambler. He's doing the launcher, going for the full optimal, going to, oh, he already cashed out earlier. Into yeah, Fatal, he drops no, it. No. Oh, no, into the ice ball. Is this going to be enough to kill? I think it will. It's a cr no oh, crushing 10, blow. 50, 10, 50. He blocked it. He forces oh. stays alive. Forces stays alive. No way. The Duck, that was absolutely insane for Parsa. The scramble, and we're heading straight into it. No breaks. We got ourselves a game five, ladies and gentlemen. I can't breathe this easy. <laughs> yeah. We got this. We got this. It's, I don't know if the players are breathing. <laughs> <laughs> there goes the forward two here from Parsa. King Gambler getting the reversal counter here with the slide. 
Oh my goodness, King Gambler with the short hop trying to get a mix in the corner here. Parsa getting the hard knockdown, but gets jumped out of the command grab. Gambler looking to close out this round and just one more round for him to get top eight. Parsa's got to pull something out right now. He does, he does. He needs to play just as clean as he did before. And great uh, defense right now, able to actually catch it. But unfortunately, because King Gambler took the hit, the tick throw did not go off. Yeah, that is one piece of tech. If Total goes for that one, two, you take the hit from the two so that you make sure that that command grab whiffs. That's huge knowledge for King Gambler to have. Now, note here that King Gambler did cash out on that crushing blow. That was something that he had cashed out earlier, mm -hmm. and it made him pay the price towards the end. So we need to see if he can fully clean this up. Parsa, though, not going to be able to break away. Oh, oh my no God. meter. Only and there it goes. King Gambler, we see the hug it out. We see the sportsmanship. King Gambler is heading to top eight for Mortal Kombat, a combo breaker on the loser's side. That was an insane match. I am, I am speechless. My heart is racing. I, I don't, okay. I think today that was probably the most hype match I have commentated. Ooh. I literally, <laughs> I need to watch that back quite honestly yes. because that was just very much intense and I don't think I had the proper words for it. But with that, we do have King Gambler moving on to top eight. We have a couple of more matches, uh, but before we get do, we're gonna go ahead and go into a quick break. Don't go anywhere. These matches are about to keep getting even hype. Yeah, these matches are insane. Don't go anywhere. We're gonna try to breathe again. See you guys in a little bit. There's plenty more Combo Breaker 2023 action coming at you on the way. But first, let's take a quick commercial break. If you want to add to your Combo Breaker merch legacy collection, don't forget to head over to the Combo Breaker shop to check out all the amazing merch. Get yours before they run out. What is up, you guys? We are back. We have composed ourselves a little bit from the last match. We have two more matches here on the loser side of top 24 of players who are on their last chance to get into top eight. We have Sunyo versus Gur, who are gonna be going at it first, and then we're gonna see two Easy versus Zintai, two amazing matches getting ready for you. And how do you feel going into Sunyo versus Gur? This is another match that's gonna give me a heart attack. Yes. I just know it. For uh, sure. For everybody just tuning in, to recap real quick, we have on the winner's side, we have uh, Odiful Allo in top eight. We have Scorpion Prox in top eight. We have Euphoring in top eight, and we have Nicholas on top eight. And on the loser side, we do have Ludi. We just finished watching King Gambler take it over 3-2 over Parsa. And now we're going to watch Sunil versus Gur. First off, shout outs to one of the best teams in the NRS scene, Dynamic Focus, because we got one of the best players here, Gur. All right, coming back and making the comeback happen. Has been gone a little bit, due to some, you know, real life stuff, of course. But more than anything, is here today to show off that he's got the skill to make this top eight for Combo Breaker. Yes, of course. And for anybody who may be new to the scene or anything, Gur is one of the original Garrus players. He is yep. one of the best, if not the best Garrus players. He is such a top level competitor. And Sunio, we already saw play earlier. We yeah. saw him get sent to losers, and you know that he's also a top-level RoboCop. So we're in for a ride. Indeed. Sunio did lose to Scorpion Prox. That was for top eight. So now this is the only last chance, and he's got girth in front of him. Exactly. That's a scary match to have in front of you, but I believe in both of these players. We'll see how they're going into it. Oh, and just tech to start it off. I love Garrus's tech. Get off me. <laughs> All right, now Gur likes to use the Sand Clone mm -hmm. as well as uh, gets the most optimal optimal damage here. There goes the kick. Yeah, he uses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he uses Sand Clone multiple times to give him that option to be able to punish certain things from long range, so that Sunyo is not able to zone as much as he'd like to. I like some of these pillars as well. This has been a pretty helpful considering that Sunil likes to stay in the uh, in the back end most of the time. But the jump into the cross-up for the OCP charge. Yep. 
and we see just pokes here. Ooh. Ooh! Missing the opportunity to down two crushing blow that command grab. Now with the clone, if you do block it, you are plus. So that's something to keep in mind for Sunio. And there goes the command grab. We're gonna yeet. Yep, we're just gonna scoop him up and go for a run. And able to get that air. Oh, here we go, Sunio taking the first round just with that one, two into gun over Gur. Gur gonna make sure also, you'll notice through every single one of these matches with Sand Trap, Gur is gonna take the opportunities that he has to whiff it so that he can load that crushing blow as soon as he can. Ooh, that flawless block up too was gorgeous. Waiting exactly the right time for Sunio to continue with that second hit. Now that is a down four. We're gonna go ahead and get command grab and keep Sunio in this corner. Tries to go for the down four anti-air. Yep, and getting caught by that low auto nine. Flawless blocks on it, misses the chips. Like I said, he keeps using that sand trap and it might look like, why is he whiffing it? He needs to whiff it at least two times before he can get the crushing blow on it. Yeah, so sometimes it is on, on purpose, but that is a crushing blow from the OCP charge. And doesn't go for the overhead. Gurr just holding all this chip damage. Really needs to move in and make a move right now. He does not have the life lead. One, two, one into the sand clone. Now the good thing about the sand clone for Gur, unfortunately, yeah, that auto nine is gonna checkmate that situation. Mm -hmm. uh, the good thing about the sand clone is that it doesn't necessarily disappear when he gets, um, like, when he gets chip damage, or I think yep. even when he gets hit. So mm -hmm. he's able to kind of keep that still there, and it's still in his advantage. But I think right now what Gur needs to check out here is how to get closer to Sunio and still stay in there. Because uh, right now, Sunio still has uh, the range. Also, the OCP charge tends to be, I think, one of the biggest problems and actually has been a consistent problem for more players than just Gur. Yeah, I agree. I've seen Sunio using that OCP charge every single... He seems to be able to get the KB almost every single match that we've seen. Okay, Sand Clone is up, and that forward three into the Sand Trap. Gur is going ahead and getting started here on the damage, but the OCP charge again, able to punish and stop Gur in his tracks. Ooh, and Gur unfortunately thought that he could press, but also tries to avoid it with the down three. But Sunio is just letting these rockets go. Gur now with plus frames. Yeah, plus frames, down one check. And Gur able to get that sand trap again. Blocks the jump in and has a huge amount of damage here. Sunio probably gonna be looking to break away. No, he's not. He's just gonna get scooped and put in the corner. Gur working his way in. Yeah, Gur trying to get some pressure here. Finally able to get Sunio in Fatal Blow territory. However, again, 1100 health. This is gonna take a bit. Oh no, gets hit by the crushing blow on that. I'm a little surprised that Sunio decided to go for the crushing blow and not for the amped, because at least it would still stay. But I also understand oh, now Gur gets his crushing blow though. That is one of the neediest crushing blows there is in the game. 34%, just like that, your knee is gone. And look at that conversion from the sand clone into the sand trap. Going with a short hop as well for Gur. Sunio just gonna get that forward throw and get Gur off of him. Brings out the sand pillar. Now Gur is in the spike traps. Has to be careful. Broke away early. Yep, pokes. That down four is huge from Gur as well. It's gonna be a really good option up close. Sand pillar. Sand pillar again. Happy to just sit there and chip away. I mean, to be fair, two zoning characters trying to avoid, uh, or rather trying to catch each other as they uh, push back, it makes sense. Yep, and Gur just needs chip damage here to take the round. But the forward throw and the escape failed for Sunio. He has Fatal Blow on lock, but Gur just wakes up. He threw the slug, imagine. Oh my god. The, uh, the spider in the back is not happy. <laughs> uh, to be fair, I'm not happy being on this stage, but it is what it is, I suppose. I mean, Devorah's Hive is quite the place. He already used the Crushing Blow here for Gur, so he's not going to get as much damage off of that string. But Gur flawless blocking every single time, avoiding that chip damage as much as possible, and the arrow CP just doesn't reach far enough there for Gur. I like the usage of the Body Splash. There we go, we do get a punish, and this is going to be time stopped on Sunio. 
Sunio does have the breakaway. Fortunately, Gerd does drop the last part of that combo. Yeah, surprising to see. And then he uses that KB right away. Gur using the sand trap to punish, putting out the trap. Okay. Ooh, and that not jails good. too. Oh, Ooh. Gur with the whiff D2. Sunio is going up again. Gur going to need to make a huge adjustment here if he wants to get through to top eight. I'm wondering if he would go with a different variation of Garrus or if this is just what he wants to stick with. To be fair, Sunio is playing a Robocop that is not really seen often. Yes. So this it could be also a little bit of a of trying to understand the player that Sunio is. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's an option of like trying to figure out what moves work with well with it. Um, but unfortunately, Sunio is just an amazing Robocop player through and through. It, it's very incredibly difficult. Uh, yeah. to try to make up for that. Oh, great duck on the scoop right there from Sunio as well. That's almost an unblockable as it well, I feel feels like. feels unblockable to me, I'll be honest. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there goes the Sand Clone. Once again, trying to stay plus in the situation, gets a reversal counter hit. Yep, able to get that Sand Trap. Sunio just beating out with the normals when they're here in this neutral with each other and then able to get the spacing again. And I feel like Robocop right now, or Sunio is using the better options. Okay, oh, the walk down from Gur tries to parry. Good blocks from Sunio. And that jails into a throw if you're doing it correctly every single time. Sunio here is on set point, looking to possibly take it 3-0 over Gur to get into top eight. Sunio's Robocop. The 80s movie icon. It is a problem. Oh, what a great strip guard there from Gur. Doesn't use the KB though. Okay, low auto nines right now. Still catching Gur off guard here. Yep. Brings out the spike trap. That's also another thing that's crucial in, in Sunio's plan is that even with the little damage that it's doing, it still creates this like, oh, I still gotta move out of it or I'm taking damage. Yeah, exactly. It creates, it makes it so that Sunio can control the space that he wants to be in. He wants to be in charge of where this match is going and make Gur make a decision. A quick cancel from the parry. And now we are in Fatal Blow territory for Gur. Has to do something here. No, Sunio just straight up grabbed Gur out of the sand clone. No way, Sunio is taking this 3-0, which is sending him to top eight on loser side at Combo Breaker. Great play from Sunio. Gur just could not seem to figure out how to deal with Sunio's different style of Robocop, like you were saying. You don't necessarily see the arrow CP or anything like that as much. And it's yeah. just, I mean, he just couldn't make the adjustment. Yeah, absolutely. It's, a, it's really unfortunate, but Honestly, for someone who has been on a break for quite a while yeah. and just returning, especially just in time for Mortal Kombat 1, mm -hmm. that was an amazing run for Gur. It really and was. Shout outs again to Dynamic Focus for being an amazing sponsor for him, as well as really pushing and keeping him also to well taken care of as well. He had a hand injury and he oh actually no. was able to recover and be able to actually come in with like a clear head as well. So. Yeah, that's great. And so basically like, what we're looking at here, right? So next, we have one more match. One more match to secure top eight. We have Knights Too Easy versus Zintai. Knights Too Easy has a couple of different characters he could bring to the table. Zintai, I feel like if we don't see the Shang, I would be insanely surprised. <laughs> this is actually interesting because uh, Zintai and uh, Too Easy actually uh, have pretty much trained with each other. I don't, I'm not too sure if they still train as much as they did yeah. before when the start of MK11 came out. However, uh, I know that many of like, I guess like the motivation for Zintai to like really uh, get better was with Too Easy. Yeah. Um, the thing is, is that Too Easy plays characters that really will probably cause Zintai some, some trouble. Yeah. And one of them is uh, Scorpion. Oh, yes. Scorpion yeah. is a good answer to Shang. He usually actually will run a different variation. Hell, Sparks doesn't necessarily work as well against Scorpion because the teleport can definitely be a problem. And he doesn't get zoned if you want. And if you're playing Hellport Cancel, 
you're able to do the teleport and still stay safe as long yeah. as you're able to do those single hit confirms, which somebody like Too Easy at his high of a level of play is going to be able to do those cancels as well. Completely agree with you. And again, if you're just tuning in, uh, we are getting closer to our top eight. Uh, that will be done by Ragnarok and Mustard. Until then, you got us. Ketchup. Keep you ke ke is it ketchup? It's ketchup. Oh, it's ketchup? I'm pretty sure it's ketchup. I thought it was mustard, actually. <laughs> <laughs> this is how you know twins confuse me. This is exactly what happens to me when I watch Nicholas and uh, I watch uh, uh, Scorpion Prox sometimes. I'm like, wait, who? Which one of you are? In yes. any case, you'll have be seeing that very shortly soon. Uh, regardless, though, for those of you who do not know or have not checked the bracket yet, we have full auto in top eight. Uh, we have Scorpion Prox They're gonna in top eight. They're going to be playing each other in top eight. Yes, they are. That's going to be, this is actually kind of like a rematch, I think, from at least two previous majors, yes, for sure. Yes, for sure, for sure. And then we have uh, Euphoring, who also made it to top eight, actually best at King Gambler 3-0, probably mm -hmm. one of the biggest upsets in today's games. And then we have Nicholas in top eight that does complete the winner side of things. So Euphoring is yes. actually going to face off against one of the twins. Mm -hmm. uh, and then followed by that, we have Ludi, who's on the loser side of things, uh, going up against, I believe Sunio. it is Sunio. Exactly, yes. because we first had um, King Gambler, who is that's in top eight as well, but beat Parsa mm -hmm. in a very nail-biting match, which I do say oh my so goodness. myself. <laughs> yes, that match was absolutely insane. And then the winner of Too Easy versus Zintai will have to face King Gambler on the loser side in top eight. That's an intense match for sure. I mean, yeah. I mean, woo! any of these matches in this top eight is absolutely intense. I mean, just even Too Easy versus Zintai is going to be a hype match. Make sure you guys are sticking around. We're going straight into top eight right after this as well. And so there's going to be a lot of MK coming for you. A lot of sweaty matches. A lot of scared commentators and people in the crowd who are like, what oh, is going on? <laughs> oh yeah, we're the scared ones. Oh my god. I just <laughs> During the scrambles, my heart, I can't take it sometimes. <laughs> Before we hop into this last match, before we get into top eight, we're going to go into an ad break. Don't go anywhere, everyone. Welcome back, everyone, to some more Mortal Kombat 11 action here. Top 24. We are very close. We're like, so close. We're like this close, this so close, close for our top eight to be solidified in one of the last majors for Mortal Kombat 11. Crazy. Miss Me Seeks, this next match. Another, this one's actually Florida. This is Florida versus Florida, and I'm not too happy about it. I was it, like, how do you choose? It is what it is. <laughs> you were like, okay, Florida boys. Well, now you have Florida versus Florida. We have Too Easy versus Zintai. Both very high-level players, obviously, fighting to get into top eight. This is both of their last chances right now to solidify top eight at Combo Breaker. We know Zintai is going to go Shang, probably. Yes. Zintai is a Shang loyalist. I would be so surprised if I saw him get off of Shang. But Too Easy, you had mentioned, has a couple of different options that he could go with. Yes, many of the characters that Zintai, um, or rather Too Easy, plays are direct counters to uh, Shang, uh, mm -hmm. one of them being Scorpion. Mm -hmm. Uh, while I'm not too sure if Too Easy, because it has been a while, right? Yeah. But I'm, while I'm not too sure if Too Easy will bring out the Scorpion, uh, so the Sub-Zero play is also an option mm -hmm. here, um, as well as the Cetrion. Um, definitely, I think what, what's going to be crucial here is how annoying Too Easy can be towards Zintai. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing I do want to mention, we were talking a little bit about it this earlier, is that these are two players that, um, even though they've played with each other in terms of, uh, especially earlier in the uh, Mortal Kombat 11 cycle, mm -hmm. um, they they kind of know each other pretty well in how they can play out some of these matches. And one of the things that I think uh, really helps them is the fact that they play so many different games. Yeah, definitely. I think that playing different fighting games and being competitive at different fighting games is definitely going to bring different perspectives. You mm -hmm. learn something in a different fighting game and you see, how can I apply this to this fighting game? Oh, well, this is a new concept that I didn't know about. How can I apply it to this fighting game, etc.? And I feel like if nothing else, it helps execution, et cetera. But I think it really allows the person to develop a feel for 
uh, being able to adapt to other people's gameplay in the most. Because, in my opinion, you're able to adapt if you've seen almost everything. And if you play so many different characters, so many different uh, fighting games, you're going to learn how to adapt to anything you see. Absolutely. Uh, this is going to be a button check, but there might be a potential uh, chance here for uh, Too Easy to go Sub-Zero, which would be very interesting. Yeah. Uh, Shang versus Sub-Zero, um, I think once again, really crucial, you have to flawless block some of the ground sparks. If not, you're not going to be able to get the reversal slide that is needed to be able to stop Zintai from doing his obstacle course. Yes, that's true. And also, they're, if we get up close and they're boxing, I'm sure that Too Easy is going to need to take a l full advantage of uh, the strings that Shang has that have flawless block, uh, different flawless block options within them. So you see the one where there's the ground launcher. There's time in between the second and the third hit of that string for Too Easy to flawless block punish it and get Zintai to stop pressing those buttons. So this is going to be Sub Zero versus Shang. Too easy for Z versus Zintai for that top eight spot. All right, final match for the top eight spot. I hope you guys are ready. I know we're ready. We're hopping right into this. We're letting the intros rock, and here we go. Starting off at the down four into the auto shimmy, brings out the corpse drops. Uh, too easy trying to read if uh, Zintai was going to go for the exploded corpse drop. Yeah, catches just the down three from Zintai with the ice ball. But Zintai gets the jump and forces the breakaway. One thing I really need to also make note of here is the fact that Too Easy's ice um, ice ball is actually going to be the one that's going to be favorable in the trade because of the fact that it's going to catch Zintai in frozen state. Uh, once again, we have the creeping ice as well. There it goes. This is the start of the momentum that Too Easy needs, and this is going to stop Zintai from his obstacle course. Yeah, it is, but Zintai doing a great job working out of the corner like that. Both of them have Fatal Blow on lock. If they want to use it, it's first round. They probably don't, but if they can close out the round, they will. The down four check blocks that Fatal Blow attempt wake up from Zintai, and Too Easy has taken this first round. Too easy not using Fatal Blow after going for the low was actually really smart. And what a great punish because that slide low profiled the Fire Skull. Yeah, that was a very good. Oh, and we see the rain cancel punish into the forward grab. Every time you see a forward throw from Zintai, he's going to be getting a little bit of health back. But actually, now that you mentioned that, I don't think he has ground eruption. Yeah, I don't think he's running it either. I think he's running a different variation because ground eruption isn't going to work as well against Sub-Zero. Zintai has yeah. a lot of options based on if he wants to zone or not. Yeah, this is a more up and close shank that we're going to see here from Zintai. Gets the punish. There's the Ermac, Ermac lift. lift. That's what's the difference. You have the rain cancel and you have the Ermac lift for the damage. Yeah, and that was a great conversion off of the jump three into the Ermac lift. Zintai just trying to poke and keep too easy in the Ooh. corner, but too easy gets that forward two ice ball. No way! And he resets again into the forward two ice ball. The stand four fatal blow. Too easy is going to go ahead and take this first match over Zintai 1-0 taking him one step closer. That was a two American reset, Miss Nisi. I, 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 I don't even know like if I want to talk about it, that it was forward two into ice ball into forward two into ice ball. I don't even know if I want to like pretend like that happened. <laughs> that was insane. Too easy catching the roll and then going forward. That was so smart. And now he's up a game. Yeah, and going ahead and starting out right away with the slide, gets the forward two ice ball, has already loaded one slide for the KB, gets the corner carry as well. No Ermac lift on that jump three, and what spacing from Too Easy. Able to get the back three, goes for the amplified slide again. Forward two and wow. just finishes the string. Too Easy is absolutely mauling with this sub-zero. It is literally I want to say 20 seconds that it took for that round, and Too Easy is just not giving up. Yeah, he isn't, but there's that jump three into Ermac lift. Good OS on Zintai's part. He's able to finish it out with the optimal as well. Whiffs the grab, but no punish from Too Easy. Oh, and there's the opportunity for a flawless block punish for Too Easy in that string. Yeah, I think Too Easy did try to go for it. Now, Too Easy's in this Fatal Blow territory range. You don't want to be in there, though. 
as Zintai needs to make sure he can clean up this round. Flawless blocking the creeping ice. Goes for the rain kick, but it's not going to catch too easy off guard. And we do have the soul steal for the kill. Yeah, it just finishes it out there. But going into this final round, even though too easy doesn't have, actually he still has Fatal Blow. They both have Fatal Blow, but he also has loaded that slide KB, which is so much damage if he can get it off. What a hit confirm, and it has to end in the slide due to the fact that it's so low on the ground mm -hmm. that Zintai got frozen, but that is an extremely hard hit confirm, especially when you catch it off of Creepy Nice. Oh, for sure, and Zintai gonna get a little bit of health back from that forward throw, but the forward two mix, Oh my goodness, and the side switch forcing the breakaway. They both trade on the down ones. And Zintai trying to get that overhead, gets the side switch into the Ermac lift. This is gonna be a lot of damage, 37% just like that. Oh my gosh, the dash up again. And there it goes. That's, that's it, that's the kill. That's the kill. Too Easy is going to be taking this 2-0 over Zintai. He is one point away from making it to top eight, <laughs> what is Zintai gonna do? I love his face. He's like, oh my God, I already know. Yeah, I already know. Like, so it's his character, it's his character. It's, it works, you yeah. know, just let me. Notice that um, Too Easy has been playing a little, if you compare like, for example, King Gambler versus Too Easy, mm -hmm. King Gambler is very much more of the methodical approach, mm -hmm. whereas Too Easy is actually working with shimmies. Like he's actually dashing up, mm -hmm. creating spacing, and making it really hard for Zintai to gauge whether or not he's trying to go for the overhead. Yeah, oh, that back 3-2 right there, able to get the side switch as well, goes ahead and amplifies that slide, wants to go ahead and load it up if he needs it later in the match. Too Easy just checking right here. The flawless Ooh. block on the jump in as well. Beautiful. Great stuff here from Too Easy, but now Zintai able to get a little bit of help back. Gets caught with the ice slide. And now it's loaded. Too Easy can use that ice slide amplified anytime he wants now. Ooh, just trying to check Ooh. each other. The jump three OS into the Ermac lift. Interesting usage to end with that combo. Again, the overhead. And Too Easy getting the jump one combo. Going for the side switch to keep Zintai in the corner. Both of them have Fatal Blow on lock too. Just one confirm into Fatal Blow could take the round for them. Ooh. Oh, doesn't need it though. Gonna get the slide, not spend the KB. Get the side switch and stick Zintai in the corner. Too easy is sitting on set point right now. This has been a different Zintai uh, compared to the one that we've seen before. And rightfully so, that, right? He has to take advantage of the optimals from this variation. Mm -hmm. You can't really play against too easy with the uh, projectiles that we saw from before. But look at the stagger game from that auto shimmy. Yeah, we're seeing these pokes now from Zintai. He's making an adaptation, realizes that he needs to change his gameplay style. But just like that, too easy is going to go ahead and spend that KB. Boom. 41 percent what is this character just just like that ermac lift this isn't gonna be enough to take the round but zintai just needs one more hit confirm to take us to a final round and there it is zintai is staying alive barely looking to make this reverse 3-0 if possible Indeed. It can happen. It can happen. Zintai is a very strong player. Look at this punish. Very nice. Going to be able to actually optimize fully for about 37%. Uh, with that in mind, too easy though. Breaking away early, choosing to still stay in the corner here. Yeah. And we've got, he's trying to work his way out. Good tech there from too easy. Okay, Just the checks here from Zintai, trying to have the right spacing. He blocks the overhead and the creeping ice, but no punish. Ooh, I think Zintai tried to flawless block the second part of the creeping ice, but still did not phase him. And now too easy here at 134 points of health. Yeah, Zintai has the life lead. Oh, and <gasps> he gets the trade, but easy is still able to get that Ooh. conversion. <gasps> Misses the forward two. What's the move here from Zintai? Just pokes, going for chip, going for chip, Ooh. and Zintai is able to close it out. He is on the board. We're going two to one, guys. We have ourselves a set. Very much so. A good set indeed. Zintai showing signs of life and really making this uh, variation work. It took a little bit, right? It took yeah. a little bit to adapt, mm -hmm. but it's definitely doing the job that it needs to do. 
Um, I think right here, Too Easy just needs to be a little more careful. One thing to notice that that down four poke mm -hmm. is a great way to kind of like keep the neutral on Zintai side. Yeah, that is true. Sub-Zero also has a good down four poke, but not going to be quite as fast as Zintai's. It just reaches a little bit further. Oh, but look at this damage oh, in the corner. Gosh. Too Easy is just pumping it out damage 29% right there and there's gonna be an escape fail but it's not how uh, Shang actually has to load it he has to get soul steal and then he has to grab okay good down one and now too easy getting the overhead and this is another overhead and we're back on the same story from the first game from oh the last game rather this is potential set point. Exactly. Zintai, though, was able to fight for his life in this exact same position last time. We will see if he's able to pull it out again. The jump three into the Ermac lift. Full optimals, but drops it. Great throw tech here from Too Easy. Oh. Tries to go for the down two. Did call out Zintai's jump, but unfortunately was a little too early on it. And that's something that Zintai does really well is the late jump-ins. Yeah, he does. He delays his jump-ins. He kind of makes it Woo! so that you don't know where he's going. The forward throw here from Too Easy. Too Easy now has the momentum and has Zintai in the corner. This is going to be a rough spark for Zintai to get out of Ermac he's, lift. He's able to get out of it, though. Putting Too Easy, though, in... Fatal blow territory oh, is not something terrifying. I would recommend. Oh no, that's there it is! No! Too easy taking it with the four two into GG's take. Shake my hand and going on to top eight on the loser's side over Zintai. Oh boy. Oh boy. Sub zero. <laughs> How are you feeling about that, that one, Saki? That character, I, <laughs> ooh. ooh, I got words. I got oh, words. Oh, no. The best way I could describe that is, again, if you, listen, if you watch any of these matches here at Combo Breaker, right. and you want to learn something, yeah. don't put Sub-Zero in 30% health. Yeah, you really don't want to. It's like, it's kind of, it's, Loki the same as Joker, because if you think about it, as soon as Joker gets below 30% health, he gets access to that Fatal Blow KB uh, with the throw and everything, the Fatal Blow cancel. He becomes a 20 times better player. When you have Sub-Zero below 30% health, yeah. it is just forward two into GG's. It's back three into GG's. There's so many options. You're going to get mixed. You're going to get Fatal Blown. You're going to die. It's just, it's terrifying position to be in for it's sure. A lot. It's a <laughs> lot, let me tell you. And again, I mean, if we look at how every Sub-Zero has played on this stage, I mean, you can't tell me to just guess better. Yeah, I'm you, sorry, you just can't. Just <laughs> react, just react. I mean, oh my gosh. There's so, oh, especially when you're in the corner, right? So a lot of the Sub-Zeros you'll see like, if you're knocked down hard in the corner, they'll do a short hop, mm -hmm. and then either they'll do a full jump, jump in in case they're trying to bait out the wake up buttons, or is it gonna be an or overhead, or is it gonna be a grab, or is it gonna be a low? There are four options you need to choose from and try to figure out how to get out of, which is absolutely insane. And we're gonna see even more Sub-Zero play in this top eight as well. That is true. So to recap again from this top 24 that you lovingly joined with us and we appreciate you all Thank for you. tuning in and supporting, of course, our scene. There is still plenty of Mortal Kombat action to go, but let's go ahead and uh, cover a little bit about the top eight. So yeah. we got OD Full Auto on the winner's side. We got Scorpion Prox, who will be going up against OD Full yes. Auto. We got Euphoria, who has been probably the most upsetting player and i mean that in a good way a great way because of the fact that like there is so much happening thanks to this player he shook things up he shook up this 100%. entire bracket 3 owing king gambler probably shook most people who are watching this most people like you said who were oh this is the bracket then this is how i think it's gonna go i just how imagine everyone's predictions they're like i, rem I remember seeing tentos i remember yeah. seeing aquamans and they're like yeah we you know, I yeah. think that this could happen. I, th I think that, that this makes sense. And then 
Bam. Yeah. All you all lost channel points. Yeah, like who called you for making it? <laughs> I mean, good on him. Played amazing. Definitely a dark horse in this and on the winner's side as well, which is so yeah. impressive. We'll be going up against Nicholas, which Ooh. completes the winner side of things. Let's talk about the loser side. So we got Ludi, mm -hmm. who will be facing off. Uh, I believe that might be uh, too easy, actually. Uh, might be facing off against too easy. We have King Gambler, who might be facing off against Sunio, and that will be. I Your believe it's Ludi Sunio, by the way. It's Ludi Sunio? I think it's Ludi yeah, Sunio. Yeah, it might be then. My bad. I can't pick. I, I have, like, the brackets, like, upside down in my head. I could also be wrong. So, <laughs> you guys, feel free to check the bracket on Start yes. GG. Um, it's a live bracket. You can see what games are being played when. But for top eight, all games are going to be streamed. You're going to see all of the action. We're going to have Ragnarok and Ketchup on the mic as well. Fan favorites, I am sure. And, I mean, thank you so much for commentating with me, no, Saki. thank you. <laughs> Listen, everyone, you all have to understand, it is so important for us to be here in front of you commentating. So please remember that it's more than just showing up at these tournaments yes. and supporting us. Definitely thank you so much to everyone for tuning in. Miss Meeseeks, I am so freaking proud of you. Thank you. That okay? actually means so much coming from you. You are an amazing commentator. I hope to commentate more with you in the future. Please, everyone, go ahead. Give us a follow. Definitely check out everything. And once again, thank you for joining us for Mortal Kombat 11 Top 24. Enjoy the Top 8 for Indeed. sure. We'll see you next time. Y'all make sure to head over to the Combo Breaker Shop right now and check out all the amazing merch from shirts to hats and more in stores. Get it today.